Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what, if Naruto has Sanin level jutsu in Shunin exams. Before I start, please support for more amazing content, and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Shining Sunsets, and link in description and support writer. Let's start the video. Hataki Kakashi was no child. Kakashi was a prodigy, graduation the academy at the age of six. He was Sharingan no Kakashi, the copy nin, copier of a thousand jutsu. He was an ANBU commander, probably one of the youngest ever in history. He was feared and idolized throughout the hidden villages, and his name in every bingo book. Then why the hell was Saratobi berating him like a four-year-old child? Kakashi, Saratobi said sternly, this is the third time this month I've had to personally summon you about one of your missions gone wrong. Kakashi internally rolled his eyes. Under no circumstances are you allowed to flood an entire town with water jutsus just to wipe out three enemy ninja. Kakashi winced. Hokage-sama. Saratobi sighed. Kakashi, I truly expected better of you. You are an extremely powerful ANBU, one of the best in our village, but this time you've gone too far. Kakashi was not liking the sound of this. Therefore, I have no choice but to take you off active duty until I see that you can control your impulses for destruction. Kakashi froze. No. Freaking. Wait. What? But Hokage-sama, it was an axe side. Saratobi leaned back in his chair, his pipe smoking. Kakashi, this is not the first time I have heard that excuse. My decision is final. Hokage-sama Kakashi pleaded. No buts, Kakashi. You are dismissed. Saratobi ordered, his voice like steel. Kakashi sighed. When Lord Hokage used that tone, there was no changing his mind. Yes, Hokage-sama. The now former NBU flew through a series of hand signs, and with a swirl of leaves Hataki Kakashi disappeared. Saratobi rubbed his temples. What am I going to do with you, Kakashi? Kakashi wandered the twilight streets of Konoha, grumbling about the injustice of it all. The cool, crisp air did nothing to calm the raging storm rapidly building inside him. Why the hell did the old geezer take me off active duty? That was practically stripping me of my ANBU rank. I was one of the Hokage's best ninja. He looked towards the sky, glaring fiercely at a cloud that looked suspiciously like his ANBU mask. Now, he was nothing but a jounin. A jounin. How pathetic is that? Growling under his breath, he decided to get something to eat and cool his head. Heading to the dango stand sounded like a pretty good idea right now. Putting his hands in his pockets, he stormed across the streets of nighttime Kanoha in search of the dango shop. The streets seemed pretty much totally deserted, a few citizens taking late-night walks and some parents returning from work. Kakashi identified four ninja, probably a jounin and his genin team, leaping across the rooftops, nothing but quick shadows. Kakashi gave another low growl. Not only was he confined to A-rank missions, it was officially his responsibility to take on a team of brats straight out of the academy, probably with no experience or talent whatsoever. Pfft. Like he'd ever pass a team, much less take one on in the first place. Reaching the stand, he pulled out his wallet and looked at the dango hungrily, feeling much better than before. You um, excuse em me, ninja-san? He felt a timid voice call, and felt a tug on his uniform. He looked down to see two big, bright emerald eyes. It was a young girl probably about the age of four. The first thing he noticed right off the bat was her unusually colored hair. It was a bubblegum pink, a color that shouldn't even be natural, and Kakashi was pretty sure a four-year-old couldn't dye her own hair or get permission to do so. Her hair was tied up with a tattered red ribbon, making her look rather cute. She wore a dirty red dress, with mud splotched near the bottom hem, and the edges of the dress frayed and worn. The dress certainly looked like it had seen better days. And frankly, the girl did too. She had a filthy face smeared with soot, and her feet were bare and covered with mud. An orphan, from the looks of it. Her petite figure was shaking, and Kakashi could see her rib age through her dress. Just how long had it been since she had last eaten? Twisting her hands together, she nervously said, W would you mind walking and me home tonight, and Ninja-san? I'm lost A and my brothers must be be worried sick her voice trailed off timidly. Kakashi felt pity for the girl. No one else was in sight, and from the way she said home it sounded like somewhere on the streets. He gave her one of his famous eye smiles. Sure thing, kid. Where is your house near? It's see close to the Inazuka compound, B, but it's so dark I see can't see where T to go. She was cut off by Kakashi grabbing her hand. W, what are you D doing? Kakashi merely smirked. Hold on tight. Using a CLS transportation jutsu, with a whirl of leaves they could see the glowing lights of the Inazuka compound, along with the barking of the Inazuka hounds and the clan head, Sim, screaming at her children. So, all in all, a typical night there. The girl gasped. Why how did you do that? Kakashi gave her another eye smile. That's a secret. 
Oh, what's your name, kid? She mumbled something under her breath. What? Sakura, she breathed. He smiled and ruffled Sakura's hair. That's a fitting name for ya, Pinky. She giggled cutely in the way only four-year-old girls can pull off. Looking around, the copyneen asked, Hey, Pinky, where's your home from here? She examined her surroundings and point towards an alleyway. Over there, I think. Taking his hand with a visible bit of confidence, she tugged on his arm. W would you like to see our H home? She blushed. I it's not very pretty, as so if you don't W want to I understand. Sure Pinky, just lead the way. He shrugged. Sakura seemed to brighten with just that simple sentence. Okay. She lead him down an alleyway and right into another, twisting and turning down more and more. Kakashi was sure they were lost until finally, they reached a dead end with a large cardboard box. There was no one in sight, the cracked gray walls with random metal bars sticking out of them and the slight light from the moon gave it an altogether eerie feel. Kakashi had been to the Inazuka compound many times, but this was his first time ever being in this area. He supposed this was why Sakura had chosen to stay near here. H here we are she told him softly. Kakashi felt his heart clench a little. The box is your house. He almost shouted in disbelief. Her eyes widened in surprise out his outburst, until realization dawned on her, and she let loose a cute little giggle. Oh, and no, Mr. Ninja, that's just how we get to our house. It's K kinda our step stool, I suppose. Sakura jumped onto the box, which groaned under her slight weight but held fast, and from there to a ledge Kakashi hadn't noticed before. It was well camouflaged and was about one by two feet. She then grabbed a metal rod stuck into the wall in a U-shape, and gracefully hoisted herself up onto a small balcony. The balcony had rusty iron bars surrounding it except for a single part, and was bent into place. Kakashi had to admire the agility and grace this young girl had. She would be a fine kanoichi but if she's an orphan, it's unlikely she'll be accepted into the academy. Sakura pushed aside a large sheet of rusted metal, which he assumed was their makeshift door, and poked her head inside. She called out softly, Naruto and I, Sasuke and I, I'm back. It seemed like the words had barely left Sakura's mouth before two blurs tackled the younger girl. Imuto. Where have you been? Me and Aniki were worried sick. The first one cried. It was a young boy, about Sakura's age. He had spiky blonde hair that stuck up in all directions, but that was about all Kakashi could see at the time. He wore a ragged orange jumpsuit that was in about as bad condition as Sakura's dress, except with a few extra tears here and there. Like Sakura, he had no shoes. Man, don't go scaring us like that again, you hear, Karachan? Yeah, Kara, what happened? Are you hurt? The second boy demanded. Like the others, he seemed to be about four, though he seemed to be the oldest of the trio. He had spiky black hair, and was currently checking the girl's arms for injuries. He wore a turn blue shirt and black shorts, and like the other two, was barefoot. Kakashi had to wonder, what was with the boys and their spiky hair? Sakura smiled. As sorry to worry you, Aniki, I'm alright though. I got lost while foraging, but... The blonde interrupted by screaming. Ah. Someone's here. He yelled, pointing at Kakashi. Kakashi could finally get a good view of his features. He had clear cerulean eyes and three strange whisker markings on each of his cheeks' scars. Birthmarks? Tattoos? But now that he was facing Kakashi, the man realized he was a carbon copy of the fourth Hokage. The second boy, he didn't know if it was Naruto or Sasuke, turned around and his onyx eyes hardened. Who are you, and what do you want? He asked coldly. The boy then turned towards the blonde and signaled something with his hand. It must have been some kind of secret language because immediately the blonde boy disappeared, taking Sakura with him. The blonde boy returned in an instant, holding something in his hands. A piece of paper each crap. An explosive tag. Where the hell did these kids get an explosive tag? He realized he had to stop this before this got out out of hand. Kakashi held his hands up in a surrendering gesture. Hey, I'm not here to hurt you. I just came to make sure Sakura got home safe. The black-haired boy's eyes narrowed. How do you know our sister? He inquired suspiciously. Kakashi shrugged. She was lost, so I offered to bring her home. She did mention two brothers that's you guys, right? The Minato lookalike still looked wary. So you know Sakura, huh? Well then, what color are her shoes? Kakashi blinked in surprise. She wasn't wearing any. The boy out down the tag. Okay, old man, I believe you for now, but if Sakura says she doesn't know you I won't hold back, Dada Bayo. Believe it? An old man, really? He disappeared again and returned with the pinquette. Imado, do you know this guy? Sakura nodded. H he was the one who helped me get back home. The blonde immediately brightened. Well then, Ojizen, sorry about that, Databeo. Since you helped Karachan, we should be thanking you. He offered him a grin. 
Kakashi's visible eyebrow twitched in irritation. I'm not an old man. The black-haired one grunted. Thanks for bringing her back. Not the friendly type, is he? Reminds me of myself when I was kid and that's not a good thing. Sakura bowed to the silver-haired man. Arigato, ninja-san. Awkward silence followed. Kakashi scratched his head. So had are you guys' names? Naruto's the name, Databeo. The blonde chirped. Geez, how many times does he say Databeo? Sasuke. The black-haired one muttered. He turned to his Amuto and asked, Did you find anything to eat? The pinkette shook her head sadly. Sasuke's shoulders slumped. Be but I did get you guys some stuff. Naruto's eyes lit up like fireworks. First, she walked over to Naruto. Check this out. She held out two kunai. These are a ninja knives, I think. One for you and one for Sasuke. She dropped one into each of their outstretched hands. Naruto looked ecstatic. This is awesome, Karachan. Thanks so much. For once, Sasuke smiled. Thanks, Sakura. He said with gratitude in his voice. Wow, these kids really care for one another, Kakashi smiled sadly. They remind me so much of my old team. Naruto looked at Sakura with confusion. Wait, Karachan, what did you get yourself? Oh. She giggled. Check this out. She pulled out a scroll. Naruto gave her a deadpan look. What what does it do? Sasuke smacked the blonde on the head. Lightly, of course. It's a summoning scroll, dummy. Look at the seals. He pointed to the black circles of intricate writing etched into the paper. Why the heck did someone throw away a summoning scroll? She pointed to the seals. From what I know, this is a scroll for medical supplies. As so if anyone gets injured we have a way to treat at this time she trailed off, the implied meaning obvious. Naruto shuddered. Pliés don't remind me of that. He shuddered. That was beyond nasty. Both Sakura and Sasuke nodded furiously. Kakashi opened his mouth to ask, but closed it again with the thought that he really didn't want to know. Suddenly, Sakura, Naruto, and Sasuke's stomachs growled in unison. Sakura and Naruto blushed, while the only clue Sasuke was embarrassed was the redness of his ears. Kakashi didn't know whether to laugh about their in-sync stomach growl or be horribly saddened by the fact that these kids were starving possibly starving their entire lives. I may be a cold shinobi, but I will not leave three kids starving on the streets. Besides, if Minato-sensei saw me do that, he'd eternally damn me for sure, my sensei or not. Why don't you guys come over to my place for some food? He asked casually. The three kids' eyes widened in disbelief. Oh my gosh, thanks so much, Ojizen, you are the nicest person I've ever met, and now I'll be able to finally eat some good food that isn't from the dump that stuff tastes nasty anyways in Amuto, and Aniki can have lots of food too and oh my gosh I'm so happy. The boy clung to Kakashi's leg, stars in his eyes as he grinned in awe, and the ninja in question sweat dropped. Sakura had a face-splitting grin, and even Sasuke had a big smile on his face. Well alright then. Hold hands kiddos. He held out both hands. He could hear Sakura whispering to her brothers, do it. He did this w weird teleport thing with me. And with that, the three kids, hand in hand, came into a full circle, Sakura in between Naruto and Sasuke. And with leaves swirling as the jutsu took place, Kakashi couldn't help but think these kids were special. They seemed different. There was something unique, powerful, strange about them. Just like that feeling he got from the precious people that were in his life Minato, Rin, Abito. They were special. And with that thought, Kakashi made a resolution to himself. These kids won't live on the streets and be neglected anymore. I'll make sure of it. As Kakashi stared at the dining table of his apartment, he was silently berating himself for inviting these kids over for dinner. They ate like monsters for Kami's sake. Every. Last. Bowl. On. Kakashi's. Table. Was. Empty. And Kakashi thought Guy ate a lot. As soon as the trio had stepped into Kakashi's, admittingly not exquisite, apartment, they rushed from corner to corner, ogling at everything, from the couch to the walls to the bookshelf, Kakashi had firmly told them not to look, after all, they were a bit young for his reading material, heck, even the toilet. Which led Kakashi to wonder where exactly they did their, ahem, business. He later realized he didn't really want to know. Kakashi could honestly say they treated his home as a person would treat a five-star hotel staring admiringly at everything since you knew you had to leave very soon. He finally decided the kids could use some entertainment, so he left them with a pad of drawing paper and some crayons. No, they were not his. Absolutely not. For them to enjoy for a bit while Kakashi prepared dinner for the four of them. Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke were staring at the pristine white paper and all. It sat perfectly in the center of the coffee table, just waiting to draw on. The only paper they got was in the trash, after all. It sits so clean. Should I draw on it? Sakura asked hesitantly. Naruto nudged Sasuke 
who sent him a fierce glare in return. Of course, Karachan. Didn't what's his name again? Sakura flushed. Two don't really know. I don't think he told me. She looked around. And I don't know where he went. The blonde merely shrugged. Well, Ojizen gave it to us and said we could draw on it, right? So it should be okay. Sasuke nodded in agreement. What are you going to draw? I was thinking that I could draw the three of us, since that's what's most important to me, Sakura said softly. Both boys gave her a genuine smile, or in Naruto's case, a blinding grin. Oh, we love you too, Karachan! Naruto exclaimed, loudly, and wrapped her in a bear hug that would crush any normal human being. But as we know already, Team 7 is quite far from normal. The Pinkette smiled happily through the hug would kill any lesser being, and turned to her siblings. You guys are gonna help me, right? She asked sweetly as Naruto released her from his death grip. Their answering grins were response enough. And with that, the three children opened the box of crayons and began their relentless attack. Unknown to the three, a particular silver-haired man was listening the entire time with a smile on his masked face. You guys are gonna help me, right? Kakashi couldn't help but grin at how utterly cute they were together. You could see Sakura gaining a lot of courage with her boys with her, Naruto had someone to calm his crazy antics and keep him under control, and Sasuke had people to rely on and open up to. It was a good combination, with each other's strengths and weaknesses balancing each other out. Okami, he was thinking about them as a genin team. If anything, they were more of a family. Yeah, it made sense. Well, they probably grew up with one another, with the whole Emuto and Aniki thing, so I suppose that they must be really close Kakashi mused. Kakashi could just see them as a gen and team. Naruto, the blonde, seemed to be the unnaturally hyper one, also the one, Kakashi noticed, that had the most chakra. He actually had an astounding amount, almost to that of a Jinchuriki. Sasuke, the reserved and calm one, seemed to be the leader, and also the oldest. He also seemed unnaturally stoic for his age. Kakashi gave a dry laugh as he prepared some cut vegetables for tempura. He was so similar to young Kakashi it was scary. And finally, the girl, Sakura, was a very quiet, more analytical and smart than the boys, and also the one who got doted on the most by the other two. Placing four bowls of rice on the dinner table, along with katsu and anajirai, and some fresh vegetables and fruits, he decided to him, check in on the trio. Read spy on. What he found was probably the most adorable thing he'd ever seen. Kakashi wasn't one for fawning, but all he wanted to do is wrap them in a hug and never let go. The three children were draped next to one another on the couch. How did they fall asleep so fast? their younger sister in the middle and the brothers on either side. Naruto was snoring softly, and Sasuke looked slightly fidgety, as he was twitching in his sleep. On the table was a single paper. It was a crude crayon drawing of the three of them together on a grassy field, complete with Naruto and Sasuke's spiky hair and Sakura's neon locks. The three kids were smiling crudely, pictured in black crayon, though they knew Sasuke well enough to only make it a half-smile for him. Kakashi grinned. He shook the loudest one the blonde. Hey, Naruto, get up. Immediately, the blonde sprung up, uncurling a knife from inside his obnoxious jumpsuit and shouted, Who's there? And once again astounding, and deafening, Kakashi with his sheer volume. Jeez, he was going to go deaf by the time this was over. Kakashi held up his hands. Hey, it's just me, he said in surrender. Naruto put the knife away and scratched his head sheepishly. Oh, sorry Ojizen, just instinct, you know? Instinct? Man, he would make one hell of a shinobi, they all would. Kakashi then felt a twitch in his eye as he remembered how he was addressed. You little brat, I'm not a grandpa. By now, the other two had awakened and were watching in a mix of amusement and slight alarm. You may excuse me, Ninja-san, but what's your name? Sakura asked curiously. The man I smiled. I'm Kakashi, kiddo. The young girl looked at him with doe eyes. Kakashi-san, can we have some food now? She asked pleadingly. Kakashi laughed. All right then, see mere kids. Dinner's ready. Three blurs, oddly enough, one pink, one yellow, and one black, raced past Kakashi and immediately settled into the chairs. Sakura, knowing her boys, gave them a stern look, and their fidgeting hands stopped inching towards the bowls. Though Sakura herself wasn't much better, and was staring at the bowls hungrily. Kakashi soon joined them, and nodded to them. And they took off. The three of them, as though it was a race, immediately snatched the bowls and started spooning food into their greedy mouths. At least Sakura and Sasuke had the dignity to use their utensils properly. Naruto was a whole other story. He began simply putting whatever he could into his bowl and literally dumping into his mouth. Kakashi watched the entire scene with a sense of morbid fascination, similar to how one watches a car crash about to happen. It's horrible and gruesome, but you can't look away. And faster than Kakashi, with all his ANBU skill, could comprehend, 
three pairs of pleading eyes were pointed his way, with a synchronized chirp of, more please? Kakashi felt his knees slightly give way and thanked Kami he was sitting down. Um that's it on dinner but if you want dessert. Pointing to his fridge weekly, he told them to get the teapot and dango, and they could talk a bit about each other. Or as everyone else oh so fondly called it, interrogation. Stumbling into a sofa chair, Kakashi tried to think about happy things, anything but the gaping hole in his wallet these kids were going to leave. A dango stick in each hand, Naruto speeded over to the living room and was asked to start first. But Ojizen, what about you? We don't know nothing about who you are or what you do or... Enough, Naruto. Sasuke cut off. Kakashi sighed. All right, you brat. My name's Hitaki Kakashi. I'm a Jonin ninja. As of now, he mumbled under his breath, and I like reading, training, and going on missions. Sakura clapped excitedly. That's so cool. She squealed. A Jonin. Sasuke smiled at his younger sister. Yeah, he's a ninja. Father told me about them before his expression darkened. The other two kids seemingly understood. Naruto reached out and patted him on the shoulder. Kakashi looked at them in confusion. Well, since I know nothing about you guys except your names, how about you tell me what your favorite things are, your age, and a little about your pasts? Kakashi hoped they trusted him enough to give him some background. Sakura and Naruto turned to their leader. Should we? Sasuke grunted. If he wanted to hurt us, he'd have done it a lot sooner. I think it's safe. The blonde grinned. All right. I'm Naruto, Databeo. I'm six. Huh, a little older than he thought. I like ramen when I can get some, Sakura and Sasuke, oh, and practicing with ninja weapons we find. And my past I know, actually. I grew up in the orphanage, but there were so many kids there I wasn't really noticed, and due to he laughed sheepishly, unfortunate circumstances, I got kicked out and lived on the streets for her. Sasuke grudgingly agreed. I'm surprised you know the words unfortunate and circumstance, dope. Tia me. Sakura sighed. You two but really, they're pretty close. She told Kakashi. Naruto beamed. Yeah, we're awesome, Databeo. Kakashi rolled his eyes. Okay, Sasuke, you're up next. Sasuke grunted. I'm Sasuke Uchiha. Kakashi felt his eyes widen. What the hell was an Uchiha kid doing out in the streets? But I refuse to go by that name anymore. I'm almost seven. I don't like many things, but those things include tomatoes, training, and my siblings. I, as you probably guessed, was exiled from the Uchiha clan by my father, saying I wasn't worthy. But I don't know why. Kakashi winced. Kicked out of your own clan. Kakashi realized the boy wasn't going to keep talking, in favor of crossing his arms and glaring at the totally innocent walls. Naruto winced. You gotta cut Sasuke some slack, Aji-san. He's not a big fan of the topic. Kakashi nodded in understanding. All right, Pinky, you're up. Sakura smiled softly but nervously. I'm Hirano Sakura, but I don't go by my last name anymore, like Sasuke. I'm six like Naruto. I like learning, my brothers, and Dango starting today, she earned a chuckle from the silver-haired man, and I've been living on my own for about a year and a half now. My parents disowned me because of my pink hair, she held up a lock with her fingers, I was always the odd one out, and people would oik on me horribly for it eventually my parents couldn't take it anymore, and they left me out in the streets. She wiped a straight tear away and smiled at her brothers. That's when Naruto and I and Sasuke and I found me. Kakashi winced in sympathy. Naruto wrapped his sibling up in another tight hug. Yup, she's like our little sis now. He shouted. Sasuke groaned. Stop being obnoxious, though. Naruto pouted at the boy's words, but turned to Kakashi. Pissed, old man, I know Sasuke seems like a total jerk right now, but he's actually just bitter about his family, he smirked. He's a total softer once you get to know him, Tabeo. He whisper shouted. Kakashi shook his head. This team was so much alike Team Minato it was scary. Naruto was a Bito, obviously. They were loud, obnoxious, but also powerful and extremely hyper. Heck, they even have the same spiky hair and megawatt grin. Sakura was Rin. They were both soft-spoken, gentle, and easy to get along with, not to mention both girls. The only thing Sakura was missing was Rin's temper when she got angry, but that would probably change as Sakura got older. He gave a shudder. One angry Rin was bad enough, but two. And finally Sasuke. They were stoic, quiet, dangerous, and cold to anyone outside their little circle of trust. Plus, they both have, or will have, in Sasuke's case, the Sharingan. Though the three of them didn't need to know that. Kakashi-san? Kakashi-san, you okay? Sakura's concerned voice broke him out of his ponderings. Kakashi nodded sheepishly, rubbing his head. Suddenly, an idea struck him like a bowling ball. The gears in his head turned like mad. It took all of his willpower not to smirk evilly. Sorry about that, 
Just thinking about how you three are so alike my Jen and team it's kind of frightening he replied nonchalantly. Naruto gave him a confused look. Janine? What's that? Kakashi smacked his forehead comically. Sasuke found the time appropriate to intervene. Jenin is a rank of shinobi, or ninja. It's the first rank, right out of the ninja school. He looked at Kakashi for confirmation. Kakashi nodded, giving Sasuke an impressed look. Very good. People that want to be ninja first enter the academy at age 6 to 7, and train until they are deemed worthy to become Jenin. The average age is around 12. Kakashi felt no need to tell them he graduated at age 8. As a matter of fact, this year's semester is starting and he mentally waited until he deemed it a believable pause. For months, to be exact. I want to join. Three curious glances were thrown towards the Uchiha. Kakashi himself was inwardly smirking. Just what he hoped for interest in the academy. But in order to do that. I'm sure you'd be great in the academy, but you've got a small problem Kakashi winced outwardly, inwardly praying this would work. Sasuke turned his startled glance to Kakashi. What? He questioned, demanded. Kakashi sighed. You need to have someone pay the entry fee. Shouts of indignation rose through the group. What? But we can't it's not fair. Now I'll never be a ninja, Ajas and what? But how are we supposed to? Kakashi held up his hands. Whoa. Let me finish. As I was saying, you need to pay for the admission. Now normally, I would pay for your admission, the three kids beamed, but I have to officially be your guardian. Sakura blinked. So basically if Sasuke wants to be a genin, he needs to be adopted by you. In a sense, yes. There'd be some paperwork and meeting with the Hokage and all that, but pretty much, I'd become a guardian to you Sasuke. Kakashi noted the contemplative look on Sasuke's face. I'll do it both his siblings were astounded, Naruto with his mouth hanging open, but Kakashi was inwardly cackling. And when there's one but under one condition, he said gruffly, I want you to adopt my siblings and enter them in the academy too. Others follow. Kakashi grinned in victory and nodded. If Sakura and Naruto looked dumbstruck before, their very minds exploded now. Oh my god you mean we get to go to ninja school and eat food and buy stuff and have a house and sleep in a bed and do all sorts of awesome stuff that we never got to do before? Oh my god I'm so excited. Sasuke team you're awesome. Screamed Naruto as he started jumping around Kakashi's apartment like a hyper bunny rabbit. Sakura, on the other hand, started to cry. She jumped into Sasuke's lap and started sobbing into his chest, while sobbing continuous thank yous to a very overwhelmed Uchiha. Kakashi was actually surprised that his soon-to-be students were this enthusiastic. He was contemplating this further when a bright yellow blob blocked all his vision and he suddenly found he couldn't breathe. Nutagara fem for idyo lauk oarr. Kakashi tried to scream. Translation. Naruto get off me before I die of lack of air. The sobbing Pinkette finally recovered from her crying fit to see a blue-faced Kakashi in the grips of a Naruto. She nudged her brother. Sasuke. Help Kakashi-san. Sasuke complied. Thunk. Ow. Whined the yellow-haired boy, rubbing the growing lump on his head ruefully. What was that for? Sasuke and Sakura instantly face-bombed. He's hopeless. They said in unison. The Hokage was seriously freaking out. Here was Kakashi. Kakashi. Hataki Kakashi. Asking to become the guardian of these three random orphans. Unbelievable. Sarutobi rubbed his eyes a couple times and looked back up and sure enough, the four people were still standing there. Three cute little kids and one out of character slash imposter former ANBU, staring at him strangely. So it wasn't a dream. Damn it. That meant it was the apocalypse. Clearing his throat and trying to salvage what little bit of Hokage-ness he had left, he spoke. So Kakashi, you wish for these three to become your charges and enter them in the academy? Kakashi gave an affirmative nod. Yes, Hokage-sama, I will to officially become their guardian and enter them in the academy this year. Sarutobi had to admit, the kids were adorable. They had giant, pleading eyes staring at him the entire time, begging him to agree. And Sarutobi hated to admit it, it was working. Kids. They're evil. Pure evil. Sarutobi went over each of their files, unsatisfied with the almost non-existent information. Name? Naruto, surname unknown. Gender male. Birthday unknown. Parents unknown. Classification unknown. Extra notes. Name, Haruno Sakura. Gender female. Birthday, March 28th. Parents, Haruno Shirji and Haruno Himiko. Classification unknown. Extra notes. Name, Achiha Sasuke. Gender male. Birthday, July 23rd. Parents, Achiha Figaka and Achiha Mikoto. Classification unknown. Extra notes. So Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura agree? 
Sarutobi asked again. The three little children nodded excitedly. The Sandame Hokage sighed. I can offer you certain parts of this negotiation, but there is one part even I have no power over. Kakashi and the children looked at him with confusion and apprehension. I cannot officially make you their father, since they have either their parents' consent nor do they even know their parents anymore, so instead I will make you their official protector and guardian. Care for them like they're your own, Kakashi. Sarutobi smiled. Yes. The three kids screamed in unison. They jumped up and brought everyone, Kakashi and Sarutobi included, into a group hug. Ahem. Well, thank you, children, but I'd like to have a word with Kakashi. Is that all right? Sarutobi gasped from lack of air. Man, the blonde could hug tightly. Kakashi, also looking a bit blue, nodded to the three, and they ran playfully from his office out into the hallway. Sarutobi straightened his robes and sat back down, Kakashi doing the same. Now, if you don't mind me prying, Kakashi, I simply want to ask you a couple questions. He paused. And for you to sign the papers. The ninja nodded, taking a seat once again and began scanning the documents. Anyways, Kakashi, I wish to ask you something. Kakashi stared at him. About what, Hokage-sama? Your motives, he said simply. Ah. Kakashi looked, for once, a bit sheepish. My reasons for adopting, correct? Sarutobi nodded. Even you must agree, suddenly having a soft spot for three random young kids. They're sweet, yes, but it's very unlike you. There was the longest pause as Kakashi pondered the question. To be perfectly honest, Hokage-sama, I really don't know. It's just... They he sighed. They remind me horribly of my old team. Abito, Rinmi, he said softly. Our personalities are all there. And he failed my team. This is almost Like Like a second chance. He nodded towards the outside door, where the three kids were blabbering in excited voices. The Hokage's eyes softened considerably. I admire your motives, Kakashi, and you also will be helping their futures as well as your own. Kakashi stared down at his lap. I also have another reason. The Hokage looked at him in surprise. What is it? Kakashi frowned. Minato-sensei. And Kushina-chan. They'd, they'd want me to do this. I can imagine Kushina shouting at me you heartless fiend. Abandoning children in need is cruel, databane. The sand I'm laughed. I should do this to honor them. And the blonde boy looks so much of the yandame it's painful. He laughed sadly. Plus, he has Kushina's temperament. The Hokage's mind was whirling. Could it be? Thank you for your time, Kakashi, you're dismissed. Sarutobi told him. As soon as Kakashi shushined away, the Sandane glanced towards the stone image of the former Hokage. The still stone face betrayed nothing of the infamous yellow flash's intentions. Minato hat are you hiding from me? Is this a child that died in the QB attack? All right, my little soon-to-be students, since you're entering the academy in about sixteen weeks, it's up to me to prepare you for anything you could face. The three looked up to him excitedly. All right. With your help we'll graduate in a flash, Databeo. Take a wild guess on who said that. Kakashi shook his head. I'm about to warn you. This is going to be the toughest sixteen weeks of your lives. I don't want any complaining, since you chose this. You got it? Hi, Kakashi-san. From now on, it's Kakashi-sensei to you. Hi. Kakashi had to admit for a trio of uneducated orphans, they had pretty damn good reflexes and battle smarts. It was day one of their new training regime and Kakashi had begun the day with a huge breakfast and some fun quizzes. Yes, he said fun. Well, at least Sakura enjoyed them or who was he kidding? If he was the one taking those tests, he'd either murder his teacher or commit suicide by now. And it wasn't just written tests. He tested them in stamina, speed, strength, reflexes, brains, and everything in between. Afterwards, he reviewed everything they didn't know and drilled it into their little heads, including history, current shinobi, status, the Hokage and basically gave them a crash course on ninjaness history. Kakashi was sure he was going to be killed in his sleep tonight, of the glare sent his way after was anything to go by. Yup, judging from the Uchiha's glower, he'd have to sleep with a kanai in his hand tonight. Once the tests were over, and the kids got a well-needed lunch break, where they once again cleaned out his kitchen, Kakashi had to say he was pleased by the results. Sure, they didn't know specific terms like kanai, shuriken or saban, kunai, shuriken, and saman? What kind of names are those? exclaimed Naruto, they still had a basic knowledge about dodging, using knives and weapons, and were all pretty fit for their age. Kakashi summed it up to living on the streets their entire lives. Obviously, wanting to see what they're capable of, Kakashi decided to give them another little test. All right, my little minions, to test your skills, I want you to each pick out some weapons and come at me with all you got. Okay? Minions was the endearing term he used for the past two hours he had taught them about well, pretty much everything they'd learn at the academy, hey? 
who said they couldn't start a bit early? After about an hour of continuous name-calling, courtesy of their new sensei, the trio had decided it was better to just let him get away with it, as their complaining did nothing. They had nodded, some groaningly, Naruto, some nervously, Sakura, and some rather stoic L.Y., Sasuke, and started raiding Kakashi's armory, which he had brought with him to training ground 19. Kakashi didn't want them learning jutsus yet, but that would come soon, with the progress they were making. Naruto, rather surprisingly, didn't grab any weapon at all. When questioned, he said that he needed nothing but his fists to beat up an old man like you. Kakashi had to roll his eyes at that. Sasuke, also surprisingly, went for the for the katana set he had brought. They were jet black and in good condition, minus the scratches from the wear of a former MBU, the thought still brought a bitter taste to his mouth, using it at least twice a month. When Kakashi asked about his motives he replied with a simple, HN. Very informative. And the girl, Sakura, had to be the most surprising of all. She went for a simple ninja knife in each hand, and donned a pair of black gloves. What they were for, Kakashi had no idea. However, Kakashi was sure they all had picked out their weapons, or lack of one, for a reason, so he braced himself for anything. All right, ready the three tensed. Begin. With a rush, the three kids took off in different directions Sakura simply jumped into the nearest tree, honestly, nothing surprised him about these kids anymore, Sasuke circled the silver-haired man, wisely waiting for an opening, and Naruto simply charged at him with all his might, screaming in oh-so-scary. I'm going to crush you. Kakashi didn't know whether to laugh or roll his eyes, so he did both. Apparently that didn't sit well for the blonde ninja, because he narrowed his eyes and shouted, Take this, old man. He flung a fist, sloppy for a ninja, but definitely better than most six-year-olds, towards the silver-haired man. Jumping to the right, Kakashi was surprised that Naruto knew how to punch with the correct form. Most genin took weeks to perfect their stance. Granted, Kakashi still dodged his blows perfectly, but he was impressed all the same. Chuckling softly, the man landed on his feet silently, looking around for the orange-clad ninja. A flash of orange brought his attention to behind him. Take this. Hiya! Naruto yelled. He stifled a laugh. An impressive kick, but it would be no use if it didn't connect. Kakashi twisted in midair, turning into a roll and leaping back up again to avoid a follow-up hook to his head. Not bad, not bad. The orange was a dead giveaway though. Note to self, get them a wardrobe change. The silver-haired Jounin caught another flash behind him, this time one off pink. Crap. Knives glinting, Sakura swiped at his feet before nimbly rolling out of the way as Naruto threw six or seven Saban at Kakashi. Her former shyness was gone, replaced by a determined glint in her eyes as she analyzed his every move. Kakashi could almost hear the gears turning in her head. She was definitely. Whoa. Kakashi ducked, almost getting beheaded by a certain feisty Uchiha. Great, now I'm getting triple teamed. He. Smiling slightly, the Jounin reached for his hip pouch and fingered a couple of kunai. Now this was getting interesting. Suddenly, a pink blur raced in and out of his vision, and he felt the sting of a shallow cut on his cheek. How in the name of Kami did she go so fast? Oh. Oh. Actually, he was asking the wrong question to himself. The real one is how the hell can a six-year-old girl who's never been to the academy know how to use chakra? Kakashi was amazed and confused at the same time. These kids didn't know what chakra was until about two hours ago. Much less utilize it as a speed boost. That kind of technique required immense chakra control. Most genin and chunin couldn't even use chakra that well. Besides, who would have taught it to her? She certainly didn't get ninja training beforehand, since the Harunos are a civilian clan from what the Hokage told him. He decided to keep his cool, and with a mask of indifference, he leapt back into the fray. Kakashi ducked again as another sword swipe made his eyes widen. These kids were good. Really good. But still was better. With a quick fluid movement, he ducked under Naruto's roundhouse kick with a kunai twisted the boy's hand behind his back, making said boy's eyes widen. With the other, he spun around the blonde-haired boy and sent him sprawling with a simple kick to the back gently, of course. He didn't want to hurt them too badly on their first day. Oh wow. Naruto groaned, rubbing his behind. Sakura took another swipe, this time at his back, but Kakashi sensed it and turned swiftly, and knocked her first knife out of reach, the second one following its companion soon after. She narrowed her eyes and threw a punch at him, and wanting to judge the amount of power she put in, he let it connect. Pow! He was officially regretting that decision. Kakashi hissed in pain as he rubbed the red mark on his cheek, the same one with the shallow cut nonetheless. Yup, big mistake to let a chakra-enhanced punch hit him, even one by a six-year-old. Big mistake. Kakashi didn't even bother wondering how she managed to copy Tsunade's style perfectly. Sakura herself seemed surprised before smirking, 
holding up her fist to examine it. Which was her mistake. Kakashi grabbed her by the arm and sent her tumbling into an already down Naruto, and two were out. Sing! A sword swipe came dangerously close to his shoulder. Kakashi cursed, forgetting the current swordsman of the team, not to mention an Uchiha, was a big mistake. With a burst of speed Kakashi circulated chakra by his feet and zoomed towards the dark-haired boy, and was received with a punch to the gut, but the former NBU paid in no mind. One well-aimed punch from him, and it was all over. The three kids lay panting in a heap, exhausted but happy nonetheless. So Kakashi sensei how did Wedo? Naruto managed to ask. Pretty good kids. Kakashi wiped his brow. I'm impressed, and I got a good idea of your strengths and weaknesses. He pointed to the blonde first. Naruto, you use Taijutsu pretty well for your age. I mean this in just curious way but how did you aim that well? Naruto blinked. Oh I don't know, I just followed your movements with my eyes and took a wild guess at where you'd be next. He shrugged. Kakashi raised an impressed eyebrow. Good reflexes, even though a bit cocky. And hyper. And excitable. He shook his head good-naturedly. Well, excellent job. You did well with improvisation and thinking on the spot. Good qualities to have in the field. Another thing I noticed was how incredibly large your chakra reserves are. That opens a great variety of jutsu to you. Naruto beamed. Next, he turned to Sasuke. Sasuke, you have excellent sword skills for your age, so I think it'd be a good idea to teach you short-range attacks and increase your sword skills. Silence greeted his words. Finally, it was the girl's turn. Sakura, I'm impressed with your chakra control, since it normally takes years to develop that well. I'd suggest studying Sunadeheim's style of fighting, which was very similar to what you were doing, and maybe get you into medical ninjutsu. All three soon to be Jenin smiled, or smirked in Sasuke's case, pleased with their results. Kakashi Sensei Sakura asked, All bravery from the fight long gone, do you think we could see what our elemental affinity is? Kakashi was surprised. How do you know about elemental affinities? She merely shrugged. Me, Naruto, and I found a ninja book about the basics of chakra, elemental affinities, and some stuff about legendary ninja. You know, Namike's Minato, Jiraiya, Tsunade and Orochimaru, Lord Hokage, Itachi Uchishi winced, obviously realizing it was bad to say the U-word in front of Sasuke. Said boy scald. Tons of famous ninja. She hurried on. Including you, Kakashi-sensei. Apparently this was news to the other two. Wait, Kakashi-sensei's famous? Naruto half-screamed, apparently mad about being kept in the dark. The pinkette nodded. He's Sharingan no Kakashi, the copy nin. Sasuke's eyes widened in comprehension. Wait you'll have the Sharingan? Kakashi chuckled at the gobsmacked look on his face. It's not my bloodline, if that's what you mean. I had a friend a best friend of mine, who was an Uchiha. He paused, gathering his thoughts. He was my teammate and best friend but the three listened attentively. A mission went wrong very, very wrong Kakashi cursed his soft heart at choking up. And his dying wish was to give me his Sharingan, so I had it transplanted by my other teammate. The trio gaped all for different reasons. Wait, what the heck is a sharing gun? The Hokage was confused. Very confused. Very, very, very confused. First, Kakashi is reckless again. Surprise, surprise. Then he leaves, and the next day asks to adopt a random trio of orphans he found on the streets. One of them who looks exactly like Namike's Minato, the former Hokage, albeit a bit younger, and has his wife, Uzumaki Kushina's temperament. What in the name of Kami was freaking going on? The Sandane was quite sure Minato had a son. Minato himself had told him. But that son was never found, apparently dying in the Kyuubi attack along with his parents. But what if? Shaking his head, Saratobi lit a cigarette and called in one of his ANBU officers with the flick of his wrist. The operative jumped down from their hidden place in the ceiling. Yes, Hokage-sama? Asked the ANBU in an emotionless voice. Crow, I want you to watch Naruto, one of Hataki Kakashi's new charges, very carefully. His two adoptive siblings also. Understood? The ANBU operative nodded. Understood, Hokage-sama. He was about to leave when he turned back for an instant. May I have the other two's names? Sarutobi nodded briskly. It would do Crow good to know this. Yes. Their names are Haruno Sakura and Uchiha Sasuke. The ANBU's eyes widened instantly. Sasuke? Uchiha Sasuke? Sarutobi hit a grin. Indeed. The ANBU operative immediately departed leaving a smug Hokage smoking his pipe. Wait until Sasuke finds out. And so, that's basically why the Uchihas are one of the strongest clans in the village. Kakashi finished his lengthy conversation with the three almost genin. That's so cool Kaka-sensei. Naruto shouted, waving his arms in a very chicken-like fashion. 
It's no wonder that the Uchiha are all strong and cocky and stuff. Hey, Sasuke team, are you going to get the Sharingan when you... Sharingan Naruto. Kakashi corrected. Sakura rolled her eyes. Anyways, back on the subject I was originally on, I think it'd be a good idea to see what elemental affinity you guys have, especially since that'll give you an advantage when doing elemental jutsus. Unknown to anyone, even Kakashi, a certain black-haired ANBU was sitting in a tree not far from where they were. The ANBU was concealing his chakra perfectly, and watching the four ninja with wide red eyes. Little brother. Kakashi held out four sheets of chakra paper. This is a special kind of paper. It detects your elemental affinity. Now, you could go to the hospital and get an examination, but I find this way much easier. He held up a piece of the paper. Just push some of your chakra into the paper, and based on the reaction, you'll be able to tell your elemental affinity. Sakura nodded thoughtfully, processing the new information. Sasuke grunted, and Naruto simply laughed. Yeah. I totally got this. How do we push our chakra again? The three other people face-palmed. Typical Naruto. Narutuk, think of it this way. Chakra is a sort of energy inside of you, your spiritual and physical energies. You need to close your eyes and concentrate on it. Imagine the energy, a small amount mind you, slowly pouring into the paper like a little trickle from a stream. Okay, he said uncertainly. Kakashi nodded. However, you only need a tiny bit for the paper to react, so don't put too much. Naruto stepped forward cautiously. Okay, he reached out a hand towards his paper, then drew it back. Amugo first. The copy name rolled his eye, the one that was visible, anyway, but consented nonetheless. Reaching out a hand, he channeled a tiny bit of chakra into the paper. Immediately, the paper crinkled. The three kids gasped in surprise. What the how did idiot just Naruto stuttered? Kakashi gave them an eye smile. See? The paper reacts to your chakra. My elemental affinity is lightning, so it crinkled up. He held up the shriveled paper. That's awesome. I want to try. The blonde screamed. He snatched a paper from Kakashi's hands, since we know Naruto is never one for waiting, and closing his eyes in intense concentration, pushed an absolute overload of chakra into it. Kakashi almost stumbled at the sheer amount of chakra Naruto put into it. A real chakra powerhouse, this one. The paper, much to Kakashi's surprise, immediately sliced in half like it was cut open. Naruto jumped back in surprise. Whoa! Kakashi-sensei, what does it mean? Said Ninja was examining the sliced paper. You have a wind affinity a very rare element, especially in Kanahagakur. The orange-clad ninja pumped his fist. All right. Now I can learn all these cool jutsus, and I'll be the strongest ninja in the village. Sasuke smacked his head. Dobe. Let me and Kara have a chance. Kakashi handed the other two paper, and both concentrated. Immediately, Sasuke's paper crinkled and started disintegrating, while Sakura's drooped, like it was wet. Kakashi nodded approvingly. Sasuke, you have lightning and fire, a good combo, and Sakura, you have water, which is another practical element and also rare here. With the three of you together, you have a good variety of jutsu. Wait, 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 why does Sasuke have two but me and Karachan only have one? Naruto complained, loudly. Kakashi sighed. Some people are born with two, others can develop it over time, or one close to an affinity. I don't have an affinity for fire, as an example, but I'm very good with fire jutsus. Sakura nodded. But our affinities just make it easier to do the jutsu, since we don't need as much chakra than others, right? Right. Kakashi nodded. You can still learn other elemental types, but some might be harder than others. It really depends on the person. Sasuke oddly spoke up. Kakashi sensei when will we be learning actual elemental jutsu? It always amazed Kakashi how serious Sasuke was all the time. Well, Kakashi began, most normal kids learn elemental jutsu around age 12 to 13, so Jen and Tichunin, their faces fell. But he continued you guys will probably learn them I know, maybe two weeks tops. Sakura stared at him, green orbs wide. We really that good? She asked in amazement. Naruto came up and slung an arm around her shoulders. Course we are, Karachan. H.N., Sasuke agreed. Kakashi clasped his hands together. All right, I think that's enough training for today, my little minions. Rummaging through his pockets, he pulled out a scroll, no bigger than an Ika Ika book, that reminded him, he seriously needed to hide those books, that he used for summoning. I suppose it's time to clean up. He opened his summoning scroll and in a flash of light, the kunai and shuriken spread around the training area vanished. While Naruto gaped. Tucking the scroll away, he turned to feel a familiar tug on his uniform. Sakura spoke up timidly. I'm um, Kakashi Sensei V never really interacted with older people like you. Kakashi felt a sharp twitch in his eye. So she twiddled her fingers. Yes, Sakura? Kakashi asked gently. 
Will you play with me? She blurted. Kakashi blinked. Out of all the things he was expecting, that was most certainly not it. This is so demeaning. Kakashi grumbled. Naruto and Sasuke looked at Kakashi sympathetically. Trust me, we know. Naruto groaned. We've been doing this for two years and it doesn't get any better. Sasuke nodded. It's better to just let her have her way. He advised. Kakashi fidgeted. He was a grown ninja, a former NBU, not a playmate, damn it. Sakura cleared her throat. Okay. Narrator, go. She glared purposely at Naruto. The blonde sighed. Once upon a time, there lived a pretty princess in a castle. He said monotonously, moving the crude doll made of twigs, a soda can, and black marker labeled narrator. Sakura giggled, pushing out her own doll, identical except for the bow cap crown and it can crumpled in a dress-like shape. This one was labeled princess. One day, the princess was walking in the woods when she heard a roar. It was a monster. Naruto continued. Roar. I am the mighty dragon. It said. Sasuke pushed his doll, this time made of two sideways cans, and a cork as the head, labeled as dragon. Roar. He said in his usual bored voice. Kakashi would have laughed if he hadn't been forced into this too. How was he forced into this again? Flashback. You want me to what? Kakashi gaped. Sakura nodded cutely. Please, 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 please with a cherry on top? She pleaded. Kakashi shook his head. Sorry, Pinky, but I've got stuff to do. He really didn't but she didn't need to know what, did she? Sakura stopped talking, and for a second Kakashi thought he'd won. Then it happened. Sakura's bright lime orb started filling with tears and quivering pitifully. Kakashi began to panic as his brain short-circuited. Kakashi could deal with S-class missing Nin, being surrounded by two dozen enemy ninja, interrogation of the worst kind, being drowned for two minutes, or even Makoto's cooking, which tasted for a lack of better words like well, he wouldn't say it, or Makoto would just ask Itachi to mangekyo his ass off but it was awful. Abito had taken Kakashi, Rin, and Minato-sensei to the Uchiha compound for dinner. They were all excused for a week afterwards due to sudden illness, oddly enough the next day. Crying girls? Not so much. Then again, what kind of respectable man was good with dealing with crying girls? With a heavy sigh, the silver-haired ninja admitted defeat. Okay, I'll play with you. Sakura's victorious smirk looked very out of place on her kind, innocent face. Kakashi was pretty sure the appropriate word here was whipped. Sasuke and Naruto began snickering. Then immediately afterwards, their snickers faded as Sakura turned to the other two boys. You guys are playing too, right? She asked sweetly. Naruto and Sasuke had identical expressions of oh crap. Flashback end. Kakashi's shoulders sagged. That was how. Kakashi-sensei. It's your turn. Sakura shouted impatiently. Okay, okay Kakashi groaned. He moved his little prince, as the name suggests, titled prince, complete with bottle cap crown, character next to the princess. Naruto continued. The prince and the princess were very happy, until one day the dragon reappeared again. Naruto's voice held no conviction whatsoever. Roar. It tied the prince up, saying you attacked me. I didn't get my dinner cause of you. I will kill you. It prepared to roast him alive. Roar. The brave princess didn't want to let him die, and suddenly took a katana and whoosh. She killed the beast in a single blow. Ow. And so, the princess and the prince lived happily ever after since they both saved each other's necks after all. The end. Kakashi sweated in relief. Oh, thank God. Sorry kids, but I have to go. Flipping through the hand seals lightning fast, their teacher disappeared with a swirl of his signature leaves. Sakura sighed. Why was he in such a hurry? We haven't even started the next game yet. She pouted. Sasuke and Naruto gave each other a look. Oh crap. If there was one thing Kakashi hated more than actually doing work, it was shopping. Shopping. He was a shinobi, a former NBU for Kami's sake. Seriously. How the hell was he stuck in a freaking shopping mall, carrying shopping bags with horrible smiling people and giant logos, with three giddy children accompanying him around? Scratch that, two giddy children. The third one was just weird. Said kid was looking up at him irritatedly. Can we go home yet? Kakashi sighed. No, Sasuke, not yet, we have to get clothes for all three of you your old torn ones just won't do. He whispered in his ear, trust me. I hate this as much as you do. But if you cooperate, I'll buy you a tomato on our way back. Sasuke immediately brightened. You promise? He asked in all six-year-old seriousness. Kakashi nodded solemnly, and Sasuke steeled himself and did his best to look happy and cheerful like a normal child should. Well, as happy as Sasuke could do. Kakashi gave him brownie points for trying. 
The other kids, Naruto and Sakura, looked genuinely joyful. He swore the two were having a field day. They were gawking everyone and everything, with people smiling at them and calling them cute it was amazing how people's attitude changed when you're supposedly of different status in this case a normal child instead of an orphan. Finally, they arrived at the dreaded destination. The ninja supplies shop. It was a quaint little place at the corner of a street, with windows that displayed hundreds of kanai, shuriken, saban, and anything else you could think of. Now, normally Kakashi loved this place. It was one of many ninja stores in Kanahigakur, but it had good quality clothes and weapons especially. But today who was brining three kids along with him? That were definitely not Jen in age. This was going to be awkward. As he pushed open the door, the shopkeeper, an old man named Kaido looked up from his weapon polishing. Ah, Kakashi. What brings you here, my friend? Need more Saban? Kaido smiled at the arrival of one of his most frequent customers. He then noticed the three kids now currently attached to his leg. Instead of giving him a look of confusion, he let out a booming laugh. All right, Kakashi, which girls did you bang up to get these three? Cause they sure don't have the same mama, that much is clear. Kakashi flushed a deep red worthy of a fire jutsu, while his three charges looked at him in confusion. Kakashi-sensei, what does bang up mean Sakura started? Sakura, don't ask. Please. He managed to grind out. He shot a glower at Kaido. And these are my soon-to-be genin team, not my kids. He growled at the shopkeeper. Kaido simply shrugged, giving him a mischievous smirk. Hey, your reaction was priceless. With another glare aimed at him by the copy name, the shopkeeper held up his hands in surrender. Okay, okay. So, what can I do for y'all kiddos? He grinned at the kids. Naruto grinned right back. We're here to get some ninja clothes, Aji-san. Kaido gave another chortling laugh. I like you, kid. You've got spunk, he said, ruffling the blonde's hair. He turned to the other kids. Now, what are your names? I'm Naruto, Dadabeo. The blonde nearly screamed, waving his hands around. The pinkette smiled. Hi, I'm Sakura. The black-haired boy merely said, Sasuke. Nice to meet you. Kaido clasped his hands together. Well then, kiddos, let's find you guys and girls some awesome ninja clothes. Oh. Look at this. It's orange. Dope that looks horrendous. Ah, but Sasuke team. I don't even know what horrendous means. It means bad looking, Naruto. Oh, thanks, Karachan. Wait and no, it is not ugly. TCH. Then you're colorblind. Kakashi had to agree with Sasuke on this one. The orange jumpsuit he was currently looking at was horrendous. The orange neon fabric glared up at them harshly, with the baggy sleeves that prevented almost all movability. Kakashi shuddered. Hey, Naruto, I have a good idea of a color scheme for you. Kakashi said fake brightly. Really? Naruto said excitedly. What is it? Kakashi tilted his head thoughtfully. He might say blue and black, the blue to match your eyes. Naruto pouted. Alba but I love orange. His whining then gave way to some contemplative thinking. Although blue isn't a bad color either he mused. Sasuke rolled his eyes. Idiot. He had already found seven normal ninja clothes sets, all of the identical. All seven were in generic ninja black, along with metal arm guards and leg guards, with two sets of black ninja boots. Seriously, with all the black he would be sporting, along with his dark eyes and hair, he'd look like a walking shadow. Which, Kakashi supposed, was a good thing for a ninja. He just hoped he wouldn't dress like that casually then people might start asking questions. Sakura, on the other hand, was holding up two matching outfits on hangers, looking between the two. One was a simple red kimono top with black shorts and a gray skirt, the other an off-shoulder green top with a mesh long-sleeved shirt underneath that you could see at the sleeves and neckline with black cargo pants. Both sets had black ninja boots. She looked up at her surrogate father. Kakashi-sensei, which one do you think is better? Kakashi narrowed his eyes thoughtfully at the two. Hmm. I think the green goes better with your hair and eyes. Sakura examined the clothes critically a final time before nodding cheerfully. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks, Kaka-sensei. She chirped. Kakashi realized that compared to when they first met, Sakura had gained a lot of confidence. Whether she was just nervous around him at the time or not he had no idea, but either way it was a good sign. When Kakashi looked again, the pinkette was holding up seven sets of the same outfit. Handing a stunned Kakashi the pile, she smiled cheekily. Thanks for holding my clothes for me, Kakashi-sensei. With a mischievous wave, she vanished into the shop, probably going to look for her brothers. That little brat. Naruto finally emerged from the maze of clothing racks. Hey Kakashi-sensei. Check this out. He proudly held out a jumpsuit that, thankfully, wasn't orange. It was sky blue and black, very similar to the orange one he was currently wearing, except a, it wasn't as old and beat up, 
and B, not nearly as obnoxious looking. Sakura nodded her approval. That's pretty good choice, Naruto and I. It goes well with your eyes. Naruto grinned. Thanks, Karachan. I like it too, cause it reminds me of my old jumpsuit, only better. He hugged the blue garment to his chest lovingly. Sasuke grunted. Can we go now? He gave Kakashi a pleading look well, if Uchiha could plead. The other three rolled their eyes. Making their way over to the counter to pay, Kakashi grumbling about carrying Sakura's stuff, they were greeted by old man Kaido. All right. You kids got your stuff? He grinned and ruffled Sakura's hair, causing said girl to giggle. Good. All right, Kakashi, let me ring them up. He held out his arms for the enormous pile of ninja clothes, which Kakashi gave to him gratefully. Checking their prices, he announced, 8,000 yen. Kakashi raised his eyebrows. Really? That's pretty cheap, for 21 ninja outfits. Are you sure you didn't? Kaido winked at the ninja. What was Hio? Kakashi grinned. Thanks, Kaido. Don't mention it. Kaido grinned back. Yup, Kaido was a great man. The three kids had made it home relatively fine, well, except for the fact that Sasuke and Naruto were arguing like typical six-year-olds about whose clothes were better. All right, how about you guys try on your new outfits? Kakashi suggested. Both boys nodded and immediately began to strip. Sakura, on the other hand, began flushing a deep red as she fidgeted uncomfortably. But Kakashi-sensei. Oh. Kakashi felt like an idiot. Ergo on to the bathroom. Nodding gratefully, the pinkette made her escape to the bathroom, while both boys were trying on their new clothes. Posing in front of the mirror, Naruto grinned, and obviously the mirror Naruto grinned right back. I look totally awesome and handsome, Databeo. Kakashi had to admit, without the orange jumpsuit Naruto did look a lot more serious and less well, weird. Sasuke groaned. Shut up, Do. Pulling on his new boots, he grunted. These will do decked out in black, the ex pulled on the sleeve. And the sleeves are made to fit Saban inside. Not bad. Which was probably Sasuke Nis for a while, this is pretty cool. I like them. Are you guys decent? A timid voice called out. Shouting a confirmation, Kakashi motioned for her to come out. Let us take a look at your new clothes, Sakura. Stepping out into the light, Kakashi grinned. You look so cute, Pinky. He teased. Sakura gave him a mock glare and crossed her arms. Kakashi sensei I. I'm supposed to look intimidating, not cute. Naruto snickered, holding his hands over his mouth gleefully. Sorry Karachan, but you do look pretty cute. Sasuke smirked. Yeah, you do. Sakura stamped her foot in typical six-year-old fashion and pouted. I hate you all. Kakashi gave her an eye smile. Hate is a strong word pinky he chuckled. Kakashi did have to admit though Sakura looked pretty damn cute. The green was fitting with her hair and eyes, and the top wasn't too low cut, they were still six, after all. Said girl fidgeted with the ninja boots. These are so thick, Kakashi sensei, what are they for? She complained, shaking one leg out. They're meant for ninja duties you can climb roofs and walk over broken glass without it piercing through, and the padding allows for an almost silent walk. Kakashi explained. He gestured to his own boots. Plus, they're sturdy, and they're warm for cold weather. But that's just it. What if it's summer? Naruto whined in agreement. Kakashi sighed. You deal with it. Sasuke grunted. H.N. Kakashi clapped his hands. All right, my little minions, time to go to the training grounds to test out your new outfits for movability. Ugh, do we have to? Sasuke groaned. Kakashi smirked. Yup. Unless, of course, you want a repeat of yesterday he trailed off. All three soon-to-be genin were suddenly up on their feet. Hi, sensei. They grumbled in unison. Kakashi knew there was someone watching the second they entered the training grounds. He was a former NBU, an elite ninja capable of completing S-rank missions with ease, mostly. He would be very disappointed with himself if the mysterious ninja remained unknown. I'm Kakashi-sensei? Naruto waved his hand in front of said man's face. Are we starting? He, along with his other two charges, were waiting not so patiently for Kakashi to begin. Kakashi nodded. But not just yet. It was time for the ninja, whoever it was, to come out. Naruto gave him a look of confusion. But what do you mean by? All right, ninja-san, you can stop spying on us now. Kakashi called into the nearby area, cutting off the blonde. We know you're here come out so we can see you. Sakura and Naruto's eyes widened, and Sasuke unsheathed a kunai, unconsciously inching towards his siblings. The grass rustled eerily, as everyone held their breath for the mysterious ninja to arrive. With an ominous swirl of mist, their spy appeared before them. Kakashi made his way towards his students, prepared for the worst. What he did see, however, calmed him a bit. 
It was a standard Mast ANBU in the usual Kanoha black bodysuit and armor, albeit short for an operative, with dark hair jetting out in spikes behind the mask of a bird. Kakashi recognized him at once, or at least his reputation. Crow. Crow inclined his head. Hataki-san? Sasuke looked between the two suspiciously. Kakashi-sensei, who is this? Crow turned to the raven-haired boy. It's been a while, Otutu. If Sasuke could look shocked, he did now. Aniki? Naruto looked between Sasuke and Crow, a look of plain confusion on his face. Okay, what am I missing here? Who's this guy, Sasuke? Crow that did something that no ANBU member ever does. He removed his mask. The bird mask revealed a teenage boy with a pale face with onyx eyes and raven hair, with two lines along the sides of his eyes. He also looked strikingly similar to Sasuke. I'm Itachi, said the teen, Sasuke's older brother. A slash and I was going to end it here but this chapter's too short enjoy the continuation. When Itachi revealed himself, Kakashi was expecting one of the following. A. Sasuke would be overjoyed to see his brother again. Kakashi still didn't get why the hell Sasuke hadn't told them sooner. B. Sasuke would be shocked into silence. He was not, however, expecting Sasuke to glare at his brother so fervently that even Itachi, the emotionless ice block he was, looked mildly shocked. What do you want? Sasuke yelled. His hands were clenched into fists, and his eyes burning with loathing. It was an amount of hate that was definitely not health for a six-year-old boy, especially when seeing his beloved older brother for the first time in two years. Itachi raised an eyebrow. Checking in on my little brother, as per Hokage-sama orders. Sasuke growled. Oh, of course it's just about the Hokage and orders. What about your little brother? Oh, wait, you don't have one anymore. He spat with contempt. You lost the right to call me Otutu two years ago, when you sided with them. Itachi sighed. Sasuke didn't understand. What was going on? Sasuke's voice was growing shrill. Oh, I knew perfectly well what was going on. You, mother, father, Hachiro, everyone. You were all planning to banish me. Kakashi raised an eyebrow at this. Itachi was in on this plan to banish Sasuke? It made no sense. Everyone who knew Itachi knew that he loved his brother more than anything. Then why would he plan against him? It made no sense. Itachi's eyes widened, though only slightly. That's why you left? Sasuke glared at him. Yes, that's why I left. Naruto chose this time to intervene. Whoa, 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 hold it. He held up his hands. Okay, why did no one tell me this before? Sasuke, you have an older brother who was plotting along with your parents to banish you. Itachi's shoulders slumped. But that didn't happen. Sakura looked confused. Okay, I'm lost here. Uchiha-san, Sasuke and I, H how about you guys explain why your sides, since you obviously have see conflicting opinions. There it was with the stutter. Kakashi supposed it was natural to feel nervous around others, especially scary NBU whom your honorary brother hated the guts of. All right, Itachi conceded. I suppose you deserve to find out the truth. He waved a hand, gesturing for them to follow. Come with me. Two years ago there was unrest in the Uchiha clan. Itachi began. The three almost genin and their sensei were sitting in a small cafe, about two blocks east from the Uchiha compound. Sakura and Naruto were showing open interest, while Sasuke was scowling in his seat, arms crossed tightly across his chest, but was listening nonetheless. One of the Uchiha clan elders, an old man named Hachiro. Wait. Sasuke interrupted rudely. What does this have to do with me being banished? He was one of the few people who were nice to me. Itachi sighed, as though he was expecting this. Patience, Otutu. I shall continue. Sasuke moved as though to retort, but Kakashi held out a hand. Easy, Sasuke. He warned. The black-haired boy grudgingly quieted down, and Itachi continued. He was always a shifty man, slippery as an eel and malicious as a snake. Now, Uchiha many stereotypes, mostly about us being power-hungry, cold, and ruthless and I'd be lying if I said some of it wasn't true. But Hachiro took this to an extreme. He manipulated everyone, the council, the other elders, and you, Otutu just to accomplish his own goals. Itachi clenched his fists. We believed he was working with Danzo. Kakashi's face darkened. Danzo? That's a new low. Everyone, the Hokage included, had their suspicions about the shifty councilman, but they obviously couldn't do anything about it. Sasuke's eyes were widened suspiciously. Itachi nodded in agreement. Kakashi could feel the incredible killer intent radiating off the team. He tried manipulating father, but luckily Odo-san saw through it, and, along with Oka-san, planned on banishing him. Father only told me because he wished for me to spy on him, to find incriminating evidence. But before I could do that, you apparently disappeared. Itachi hung his head. You just disappeared. No trance, no stuff gone, just disappeared. 
Sasuke's eyes widened. Beauty you. Itachi looked at him with solemn eyes. We didn't banish you, Sasuke. Naruto looked utterly confused. So Sasuke thinks he was banished, and Itachi thought he disappeared, then it's all a huge misunderstanding? Sasuke shook his head. I know I don't want to believe it. Itachi put a hand on Sasuke's shoulder. Otutu would never banish you. Sasuke stood still for a second, before flinging his arms around his older brother. Aniki his voice quavered. The ANBU operative, in Kakashi's humble opinion, looked the happiest he'd ever seen him. Releasing Sasuke from his impromptu hug, Itachi questioned, but why did you think you were banished anyways? The younger boy sighed. I had come home early, and you, Tusan and Ka-san were all in the kitchen talking and didn't know I was home. You and Ka-san were saying things like but why do we have to banish him? And don't you care about your little brother? You even sighed Kasan even said but feel the cold you really do that to your youngest son. And he said for the good of the Uchiha clan yes. And after all that I ran away to escape the humiliation of being publicly banished. Sasuke realized his eyes were watering and reached to wipe them furiously, only to feel two pairs of arms wrapped around him. Two familiar kids, one pink-haired and the other blonde, were smiling at him, their gazes full of sympathy. That's awful Sasuke I don't know what I'd do if I heard that. Sakura nodded. Sasuke now we didn't you tell us? A warm hand was laid on his shoulder. Onyx met Onyx and Itachi stared at him passively. Otutu you didn't deserve that. Kakashi barely noticed his clenched fist. It wasn't your fault. Sasuke growled. What I'm more upset about is how Hachiro played me like a fool. How could that low life get the better of me? He grumbled. Kakashi, Sakura, and Naruto suddenly felt very awkward. Sakura began chewing her dango slowly and Naruto twiddled his thumbs. But wait Sasuke, thank Kami, interrupted the awkward silence. Why didn't you look for me? He sniffled, some of his former vulnerability returning. Didn't you care? Itachi placed both hands on his shoulders. Sasuke. Of course we looked for you. But we couldn't cause too much of a ruckus if Danzo found out and Uchiha had run away from the compound, he'd definitely want you to join him. Trust me, he can be very persuasive when he wants to be Itachi's voice faded into a deep hatred. Kakashi had to wonder what kind of bad blood was between Itachi and Danzo. Aniki Sasuke muttered. Should I go back to the compound? Everyone at the table straightened, waiting to hear this. Itachi looked for once uncertain. I don't know, Sasuke. But I'd suggest staying away from the compound for a while things are in unrest. Sasuke nodded. I think I'll stay with my new family for a while. Itachi visibly seems hurt by this. But knowing that my real family is still accepting of me isness. He finished. Itachi smiled for most people it looked like nothing more than an upward twitch of the lips. But coming from Itachi it was like an ear-splitting grin worthy of Naruto. He patted Sasuke on the head. I need to speak with your Jounin instructor for a bit. Please go ahead and begin training. The three genin, knowing their place, nodded, and hand in hand exited the little cafe. Kakashi cleared his throat. Attack if there's something you wish to discuss with me? Itachi silently grabbed a piece of paper, scribbled something onto it, and promptly handed it to the confused Jonin. Itachi, what is this for exactly? Kakashi didn't get to finish because as soon as Kakashi grabbed the piece of paper, Itachi silently teleported away. Opening the paper curiosity, his brow furrowed at the words written. Danzo is behind this. Well, that wasn't creepy at all. But what did that mean? Was Danzo behind Sasuke's banishment? But that made no sense if Danzo knew, he'd immediately snatch the little Uchiha up and never let go. Sighing, Kakashi prepared to teleport back to his students. Uchiha Itachi was a mystery a 13-year-old mystery, but a mystery nonetheless. Back at the cafe, a 17-18-year-old to 18 -year -old girl walked up to where the group was previously. Putting on her best waitress smile, because Kami knows it's not a real one, she pulled out her pad and cleared her throat. All right, is there anything else I can get you guys? Todd, she noticed the entire table was totally empty. Goddamn it, those shinobi. Always leaving without paying. All right, my little minions, without further delay, it's time to test out your new outfits. Kakashi called out cheerfully. For once, the upside down you that was his eye looked very, very sinister. Wait. Before we start. Yes, Sasuke? You never bought me my tomato. All right, the first jutsu every genin needs to know is kawarimi, or the body replacement technique. It's an e rank jutsu, so hopefully it won't be too hard for you guys to master. Kakashi showed them the hand signs slowly. Wait, for the second one, it's like this? Sakura asked. Kakashi walked over and showed her. No, your middle fingers are laced behind. No, not like yes, that's right. He ruffled her hair. Good work, Pinky. Sakura grinned, but scowled at the nickname. Quit calling me that. Kakashi gave her a nice smile. Nope. 
Grumbling, the pinkette went through the hand signs again. As Kakashi was helping the girl, chaos was erupting across training ground 14. Ah! Naruto screamed as he suddenly popped into a tree, a leaf fluttering to the ground where he just was a second before. H.N. Sasuke was dangling from said tree, his legs tangled in the vines. This is humiliating. Um, Zensai, is this supposed to happen? Sakura questioned, both of her legs stuck in the dirt. Kakashi winced. This was why he was no academy instructor. I apologize, I didn't tell you exactly how to switch with an object. He pointed to a nearby rock. Say I'm about to be hit by a jutsu and want to replace myself with that rock over there. I need to focus my energy on the rock, do the hand signs, and keep focusing on where I want to end up. The key here is focus. Kakashi sped through the hand signs quickly, and with a poof he appeared a few feet away, a rock tumbling down into the dirt where he once stood. You can't let anything distract you, just keep everything concentrated on where you want to go. The same theory is for the shushin, a body flicker technique, but that comes much, much later. Kakashi went through the signs again, and reappeared before his soon-to-be team. This may seem like a simple, learn it and forget it jutsu, but it has many uses that can be explored, and mastery of this can save your life. I know that this simple technique has saved my life many times over. He turned to his students. Remember, this may be a low-ranking jutsu, but in the hands of a master, every jutsu can be deadly, useful, life-saving, or even all three. The genin nodded with a unified, high sensei. Naruto even gave a salute. Kakashi smacked his head. They were acting less and less like children and more and more like adults. This was bad. He couldn't have them grow up too fast not like his childhood. He felt guilt heavy his heart, and winced as he realized he was pushing them too fast, too far in just a few days. They needed a chance to be kids even though Kakashi and myself had no idea what to do with kids. Sensei? What's wrong? And what do you guys like to do to celebrate? Kakashi was officially hopeless. Note to self, do not give three already hyperactive six-year-old yes ice cream sundaes and let them into your house. He then mentally underlined and bolded the sentence. Now, before anyone yells at poor Kakashi for having no common sense whatsoever, let's keep a few things in mind. 1. He is an orphan. 2. His dad committed suicide and since then he's been a cold, heartless, single ANBU officer who has no interactions with kids whatsoever. 3. Can you really see him trying to learn how to take care of a kid just on a whim before this? Yes, Kakashi was hopeless with kids. And these kids. Hey 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 Kakashi-sensei come on and let's go and play yay. We're going to be the death of him. Kakashi facebombed again as Naruto went flying into one of his walls. Big mistake to let these monsters in his house after the ice cream disaster. Long story short, after Kakashi and his almost genin finished their daily exercises with their new outfits, and learned Kawarimi correctly, they had ice cream to celebrate success on learning the new jutsu. Since Kakashi had observed some normal families and noted that kids tended to beg their parents for ice cream which for some reason they refused most of the time. He finally understood why. Now, how was Kakashi supposed to know that having an ice cream sundae with chocolate sauce, gummy worms, whipped cream, and a cherry on top was a bad idea? It looked like junk, to be honest, but the kids loved them. Looking around the disaster that was currently his home, he regretted not simply chaining them to the training area while he went home to a quiet, peaceful house and read his romance novels, cough, porn, cough. All three kids were going haywire and the silver-haired man gave up on calming them down a while ago. Sakura and Sasuke, the more collected of the three, were playing ring around Rosie while screaming at the top of their lungs, Sasuke. Sasuke. While Naruto simply ran around and crashed into everything crashable. The walls, the dressers, the bed, the couch, the dining table, the stove, the bookshelf, Kakashi himself, Sakura, Sasuke name it and he crashed into it. A knock on the door made Kakashi's face widen in both relief and horror. On one hand, it was an excuse for him to temporarily leave the disaster room. On the other, however, it would be totally mortifying to have someone see how Hataki Kakashi, legendary S-class ANBU, was powerless to stop three six-year-olds. Well, he supposed that as long as it wasn't someone like Enko, they'd be nice enough to have pity on him. Carefully making his way to the door, and avoiding the fallen debris, he tiptoed over the welcome mat, which had touched sensitive poison Simban hidden incident he'd have to remove those eventually, and turned the brass doorknob. Hey Kakashi, what's up? What cruel, horrible deed did he do in his last life to deserve this? Standing in the doorway was Anko Midarashi, Tokabetsu Jounin and craziest girl in Kanoha, not to mention self-proclaimed psychopath. Her usual fishnet outfit was present as she absently chewed on a stick of dango, a kanai idly twirling in the other hand. Her spiky hair was messed up, and there were two long scratches on her cheek, leaving Kakashi to conclude that she either finished a mission or was training earlier though it didn't explain what she was doing at his house. Umhai Anko-san. 
May I ask what you're doing here? Kakashi questioned, trying to hide his embarrassment. Anko scoffed. Always so accusing I just came back from a mission and heard yelling coming from your apartment, so I wanted to check in and see if you've finally come to your senses about torture or if you were the one being tortured. Kakashi had a feeling that if that was the case, Anko herself would want to join in on the torturing. Anko tapped her foot impatiently. Well, aren't you going to tell me what's going on? I have an appointment at the dango shop, you know. Kakashi scratched his head rather sheepishly, a look of embarrassment coming onto his face. Erkum, see for yourself. There was no way around it, he supposed. The kunoichi followed the silver-haired man inside his small apartment, once again stepping over the welcome mat, to be greeted by the chaos. Apparently, Sasuke had found his shuriken stash and was using his drapes as target practice, while Sakura and Naruto were using bright red markers to color on his walls. Kakashi yelped in horror. All three of you, quit it now. Anko, on the other hand, laughed sadistically. I like these little monsters already. They your kids, Kashi? She inquired with a smirk, knowing his old nickname would annoy him. Kakashi felt a tick in his eye as he mentally took a deep breath. Do not murder fellow leave Shinobito, not murder fellow leave Shinobi. Ha 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 I'm just pulling your leg, Kashi. I know for a fact they ain't your brood. They look nothing like you and your old man hair. She chortled. Besides, your reaction was priceless. Did everyone seem to love teasing him about this lately? Enko Kakashi sighed exasperatedly. They're my soon-to-be Jen and team, after I enter them in the academy this year. The Kunoichi raised an eyebrow at this. This soon, and you're thinking about Jenin? A bit ambitious there, Hakashi? They're still kids, you know. Kakashi nodded without missing a beat. They already have incredible skills, I truly believe that they could be prodigies in their own right. He let a grin slide into his face. Wanna meet them? Anko laughed. You bet I would. She leaned into his ear. Besides, this is the first time in well, forever that I've seen you smile, she whispered. Kakashi shrugged. Time to call in the devil's Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke, come here. We have a visitor. He really hoped they would listen this time. At the word visitor the three kids sped towards the two jounin, each of their faces alight with curiosity. Sakura was the first to speak. Um sensei I w who's that? Kakashi smiled faintly. This is Anko Midarashi, a fellow jounin of mine and friend. Sort of he thought. He gestured to the kunoichi on his left. Said kunoichi raised a hand in greeting. Yo kiddies. She punched Kakashi to the side and crouched down. As that idiot said, I'm Anko, awesomest kunoichi ever. Naruto laughed. I like her already Kakashi sensei. I'm Naruto, dad Bayo. Sasuke smirked. H.N. Sasuke. Nice to meet you. Anko clapped her hands together. And what's your name, Pinky? Sakura muttered something under her breath that sounded suspiciously like why do grown-ups always call me Pinky? Anko laughed. I like you already, kid. And just saying, by the way, I'm calling you Pinky from now on. Sakura had the courage to roll her eyes. Kakashi-sensei already does that enough, she groaned. Kakashi shrugged when faced with Anko's glare. What? She kept glaring. Kakashi stared back. She kept glaring. Fine, I'll think of another name. The Jounin laughed victoriously. Well, you men can go play with Kakashi's house some more. I want to get to know Pinky. We girls gotta stick together, right? Sakura fiddled with her fingers. Yanaruto and Sasuke are great and all she whispered in Anko's ear. But I don't have any girlfriends to hang out with. Anko winced in sympathy. Yeah, being stuck in a house with a bunch of smelly, irresponsible, annoying, irritating boys really sucks. I feel ya, Pinky. Kakashi gave her a deadpan look. Really, Anko? Anko laughed. All right, I was originally going to just drop in and drop out, but your kids are interesting, Kakashi. I think I'll take Pinky with me to the dango shop. Sakura stared at her, eyes wide. Buteri, are you sure? You really want me to come? She whispered. The kunoichi stared at her. Obviously, kiddo, or I wouldn't be here inviting you, would I? She grinned mischievously. Besides, I think you need some girl time. Sakura felt understanding dawn on her before a small smile graced her face. I'd like that. Thank you, Anko-san. Anko ruffled her hair. No problem, kiddo. She turned to Kakashi, whom had already heard the whole exchange, but ignored that fact. You have no say in this, so I'll give it to you straight I'm stealing her for the rest of the afternoon. Go train your boys or something. We need some girl time at the dango shop. She winked at the pinkette. Sakura grinned. Naruto stepped forward and sent a glare towards Anko. Hey, 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 we don't know you, lady. How are we supposed to trust you with Karachan? Sasuke stepped beside his surrogate brother and nodded firmly in agreement. Anko smirked. Though it's cute how protective you two are, you don't need to worry much. We're just going out for Dango, and your daddy, hey. 
shouted an indignant Kakashi, can even follow us there if he wants. He's an ANBU, nothing gets past him. Three pairs of accusatory eyes snapped towards the sheepish Hitaki. Wait, you said you were a Jounin. You lied to us. Sasuke accused. Kakashi shook his head. Actually, no, I didn't. He paused, clenching his hands. I got temporarily disbanded from ANBU operations. Anko gaped. So you're saying you got kicked out of ANBU? Kakashi nodded, crossing his arms and glaring at the nearest wall. Hehehebwahahaha. The snake summoner burst into uncontrollable laughter as she gasped. My god, Kakashi, wait till a very one finds out about this one. Kakashi glared at her fiercely. Shut. Up. Anko. Said Kunoichi just rubbed her hands together and sang blackmail. Anko Kakashi said warningly. Anko immediately dropped the joking attitude. You wanna mess with me, Kakashi? You may be former NBU, but you're still yet to beat me in a fair fight. Kakashi paled slightly, and the three kids shrank back fearfully. No, Anko. Suddenly, her teasing and slightly psychotic demeanor was back, and she smiled happily. Knew you'd see it my way, Kashi. The silver-haired man merely groaned. No one could tell Anko what to do except Lord Hokage, and even then it was because she chose to listen to him. The kids, realizing the coast was clear, returned to the group. Sakura tugged on Anko's sleeve. Um, Anko san can we get going? Her look turned sheepish. I really like Dango. Anko ruffled her hair affectionately. You're a kid after my own heart, Pinky. Let's hit the road. She waved a lazy hand towards the three boys. Later, losers. As the two girls walked out the door hand in hand, the three boys simply stood there gaping. So that's Anko, huh? Naruto muttered. Yup. Kakashi replied in an equally flat voice. She's scary. Sasuke admitted in a low voice. Yup. And strong from what she said. Yup. Let's hope she doesn't rub off on Karachan. Hell yes. And what do you mean by hell? Forget I said anything. Here you are ruminant servings of Dango. The surprised waitress murmured. All right. Anko clasped her hands hands together in anticipation. Now we're talking. Anko Samuel are the nine servings for? Sakura inquired curiously. Anko blinked and looked down at the massive plates of Dango. First, call me Anko. San makes me feel old. And as for the Dango, well, a girl's gotta eat, right? So I ordered two for you and seven for me. Sakura let a grin bloom on her face. I like the way you think, Anko Nesan. She chirped. Nesan? Oh boy, that's priceless. Anko chuckled. She picked up a stick of Dango, each with four plump dumplings, in each hand and started chewing. Well, Huey up Kido you won Gieni. She instructed Sakura with her mouth full. Sakura, looking down at her own plates, shrugged. She grabbed a stick and tore off a large dumpling, chewing slowly to savor the sweet taste. So, Sakura-chan, how'd you end up with old man Kashi as your guardian? Anko asked. Sakura blinked her eyes as she felt the smallest of stings. Me and my brothers, Naruto and Sasakuri, all orphans. You're actually the first female who was nice to me. Kakashi-sensei was the first grown-up who noticed us, and he adopted us. Anko smiled softly. So Kashi does have a heart after all she murmured to herself. So, kiddo, she addressed Sakura, I'm really your first girl role model? The pinkette nodded eagerly. The snake summoner laughed softly. Then I suppose I should do my best to be a good one then, as she paused. Tell you what. Sakura leaned forwards curiously. What is it? Anak grinned. I'll be your new sensei. The young girl blinked. What? But Kakashi sensei is already. Please, Anko dismissed it with a wave of her hand. There's no rule against having two sensei, now is there? Sakura shook her head slowly. No, I suppose not. Anko clapped her hands in finality. Well, there you have it. Now you have two senseis. She grinned and ruffled her bubblegum locks. Aren't you a lucky kid, Pinky? Sakura still looked hesitant. You really mean that? Course I do, Pinky. I don't break promises. Ever. Anko told her kindly. Sakura smiled. Thank you, Anko sensei. Said Jown and laughed. Anko sensei, huh? She repeated with a grin. I could get used to the sound of that she rubbed her chin thoughtfully. Well, today's Saturday, right? So I'll train you this time every week, and afterwards we can go out for Dango together. Sakura grinned. And you're willing to train me and teach me cool ninja stuff? The snake Kunoichi smirked. Yup, along with some things girls need to know to survive in this world. She pointed to the massive plates of Dango. Well, are we gonna eat that or are we gonna eat that? The pinkhead's answering smirk was absolutely evil as she reached for another stick. I'm um, Kakashi Sensei, when is Karachan gonna be back? Naruto questioned. Kakashi shrugged helplessly. 
Anko is very independent. She'll come back when she feels like it. The man then remembered her advice. But until then, I'll teach you two a few tricks about being on a Genin team. Both kids leaned forward eagerly. Ooh, now we can get stronger Sasuke team. This'll be great. Kakashi cleared his throat. Now, there are five great elemental nations. Water, earth, fire, air, and lightning. Both kids nodded. We know this already, sensei. Sasuke grumbled. Good, good. Now let me continue, or you won't learn anything at all. Kakashi scolded. Each nation is powerful in its own right, and the shinobi exceptional. But do you know why Kanahigakur, the village hidden in the leaves, is the strongest? Naruto shrugged. And because our shinobi are trained better? Not quite Naruto, Kakashi told him. Something about Team Sit's teamwork, isn't it, Kakashi-sensei? Sasuke asked, though it was more of a statement. Correct. Kakashi smiled, while Naruto grumbled about Sasuke team always being right our shinobi learned to work together, to rely on bonds and trust between teammates. Because our shinobi aren't just employees in the same business. We're friends, comrades, partners, family. That's what Konoha is all about. Naruto wiped a tear away. That was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard he fakes out. Naruto! Kakashi roared and smacked his head. Don't mock this. Sasuke grunted. H.N. You're both idiots. Kakashi turned his glare on the Uchiha. All right, next training session you both get double workouts. Both boys paled, though Sasuke less noticeably. Nanny! Naruto screamed. Kakashi smirked. Now listen up, I'm not finished yet. He cleared his throat. There's an old quote by the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, who is also my sensei. Both boys' jaws dropped. Those who disobey the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. Those are words to live by. Both Naruto and Sasuke stared at each other. So if I abandon Naruto on a mission that's considered bad? Kakashi nodded in affirmative. Dang. I really wanted to do that. Why Sasuke team you? A knock on the door drew their attention. Two female voices could be heard outside. So I just went in with my kanai and told him you wanna mess with the Kanoha Kunoichi? In the words of my dear friend Kakashi, you're screwed. And you won't believe how fast he ran. Seriously. And all I was doing was holding a kunai, which academy-level ninja can do. The second voice let out a tinkling laugh. Wow. Oh, we're here. See you next week? Sure thing, Pinky. Take care of yourself and keep those boys in line. Will do, Enko-sensei. The three boys paled. Enko-sensei? Kakashi thought. Oh, crap. The next few days were filled with a flurry of training, training, jutsu, eating Kakashi broke, and more training. Team Hataki, as Kakashi newly dubbed them, were really transforming into the team he had imagined them to be. For one, their teamwork was already exceptional, Naruto and Sasuke still fought like an old married couple but Kakashi supposed you couldn't be perfect, being practically family, so there was no need for teamwork building exercises in Kakashi's mind. Plus, if they learned together, they could synchronize their fighting styles with each other's and that was something to be reckoned with. Not only that, but they inhaled jutsu after jutsu at a speed that would make Shushin no sure sway proud, E ranks of course, and an occasional D rank, learning quickly and helping anyone who couldn't learn it themselves. Kakashi didn't even need to prompt them about teaching each other, that they simply did on their own. And finally was their simple, hard-working attitude that rivaled most of the current chunin in Kanoha. They trained six hours a day, stopping only for meals and play time in the evening. Their diligence was truly inspiring, seeing such young kids working their asses off to achieve greater heights. The thing that seemed to change the most was their attitudes. After the first three or so days, the kids began to realize the seriousness of being a shinobi. It was not a position of greatness and glory, of saving princesses and protecting their villages with flashy and powerful jutsu. Being a shinobi meant working in the shadows, not necessarily getting recognition. In the life of a ninja, being noticed would mean death being famous was dangerous, not wonderful. Kakashi felt guilty taking most of the joy out of their training and forcing them to learn so quickly, but in this world, Children could become prey and they needed to learn how to defend themselves and the ones they cared about mainly each other. The good thing, though, was that they still seemed to enjoy training, getting stronger and completing grueling training exercises that Kakashi dreamed up, though definitely not without complaint. All right, now that you've covered the basics of being a genin, it's time to move on to more advanced techniques. I think I'll teach you a couple elemental jutsu. Kakashi proclaimed as the group stood in the center of Training Ground 11, which had become sort of a makeshift home after spending so much time training here. All three genin's eyes lit up, until Kakashi continued, but first, let's double your daily warm-ups to test your endurance, shall we? Groats echoed around the training field as the three children began their new training regime 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 50 pull-ups, and 20 laps around the training field. 
Right now a freaking hate Kakashi sensei Naruto panted angrily as he pushed himself up, barely having the energy to lower himself, and just plopping down each time. Seriously 50 pull-ups? That's just no trite he adjusted his grip on the tree branch. Sakura, gasping for breath beside him, nodded weakly in agreement. This is ridiculous kids out age shouldn't be forced to do such a hardcore training exercise. She groaned, wiping one of her sweaty hands on her green shirt. And I thought the first one was hard. Sasuke, panting alongside them, added in his five cents. Kakashi better show us some pretty awesome jutsu, or I will gut him alive. Sakura managed to roll her eyes. You are so bloodthirsty Sasuke. Naruto groaned again. This exercise could make Keith the most peaceful person on this planet want to murder this dude. True Sakura admitted. If this wasn't for our own good, I would have quit a long time ago. She told them breathlessly. The boys nodded in agreement before returning to their pain pull-ups, their hands digging into the rough tree bark. 46, 47, 48, 4950. The three almost gen and slumped to the grassy floor in a rather undignified manner. however all of them were too out of breath to care. Kakashi stood over them, his eye smile in place as always. Remember, my cute little minions, you still have twenty laps around the training field. Naruto groaned. Come on, since he give us at least five more minutes? He pleaded. Kakashi's grin now looked rather sinister. Ga Kakashi sensei what the hell were you thinking sending your crazy neen dogs after you as you bast? Cue smack from an enraged pinkette. Shut up, Naruto, you're the reason we're stuck in this situation in the first place. And watch your language, you're six for Kami's sake. Said boy whimpered. But Karachan. Both of you quit arguing or we'll be eaten alive by Kakashi's evil dogs. Quit it Sasuke, you're not helping. Well, at least I'm trying to get order around here. Team. Dobe. Team. Dobe. Tiami. Dobe. Shut up both of you before I knock both of your asses to Suna and back. H. Hi, Karachan. Sakura what's gotten into you? Kakashi's sweat dropped. He supposed Anko was rubbing off on her and he had to wonder where they learned those swear words. Irritation and exhaustion. Sorry about yelling in Sir Cute's smile. Aw, oh, it's okay, Nechan. Insert giant megawatt grin. But seriously, you guys need to get along. Insert glower. HN, insert scowl. Yup, Sakura had her boys wrapped around her pinky finger, and she didn't even know it. Hee <laughs> hee, pinky finger. Kakashi really needed to stop thinking up jokes in his mind. The damn kids were starting to rub off on him. Naruto, quit leaning on me you dobe the kids' voices began to fade as they reached the other side of the training field. Although Kakashi mused with a smile, watching his genin screaming bloody murder as they ran their laps, his neen dogs hot on their heels, maybe taking after them isn't such a bad thing after all. Naruto! Our Sasuke team don't kill me! Sakura helped save me! Oh god just keep running you idiots! Second thought, he just hoped he'd retain his sanity by the time they were of genin age. Three exhausted almost genin soon stood before him, well more like collapsed, glaring katanas at him. Why katanas? Well, he supposed their anger couldn't be contained in daggers. Kakashi sensed that was inhumane. Naruto glowered. You're so cruel, sensei. The youngest child cried, leaning on her older brother. H.N. You're evil. Kakashi scratched his head. Well, now that I know you guys are up for it, let us start with some elemental jutsu. This got the kids excited. Naruto began bouncing on the balls of his feet, while Sakura smiled eagerly and Sasuke just leaned forward. Now, Kakashi began hand seals, I'm not going to be teaching you all at once. You each get private lessons from me. Naruto waved his arms frantically. But who gets to first? The silver-eyed man chuckled. Why, all of you of course. He finished his hand signs. Kagebushin no jutsu. Instantly, two copies of Kakashi appeared in puffs of smocks next to him. Three jaws dropped. Naruto, curious as ever, went up to one and poked it. Ha, huh, it's real. The clone glared at him. Obviously I'm real, idiot. The blonde jumped three feet into the air. Ah. Oh, it can talk. Naruto screamed in shock, backing away rather quickly. Kakashi rolled his eye exasperatedly. They're shadow clones, Naruto. They can talk, think, and do everything I can do, except once they're faced with a certain amount of damage they dispel. The two Kakashi clones nodded. The first one gestured to Sakura. Pinky, you're coming with me to learn some water jutsu. I think Earth would suit you as well. Sakura nodded in agreement, while Sasuke questioned, but she doesn't have an affinity. Kakashi shrugged. You don't need an affinity in order to perform jutsu, it just makes it a heck of a lot easier. He smiled. Besides, if Sakura learns Earth, you'll have every element at your disposal. 
Naruto raised his hand as though he was in a classroom. But sensei, if you don't need an elemental affinity to perform elemental jutsu, doesn't that mean one person could learn every type? Kakashi mulled it over. I suppose, in a way, yes. Certain jutsu, depending on the user, might be harder to pull off, depending on what their elemental affinity is. He gestured to Sasuke. Take Sasuke, for example. He's a fire and lightning type. That means it'll probably be harder for him to learn water jutsu, since it's the polar opposite. Oh. Naruto exclaimed in understanding. So for me, the hardest would be earth or something? You know, like ground and sky? Their sensei clapped his hands. Excellent, Naruto. The blonde preened at the praise. And for Sakura, her hardest would be fire and air. The pinkette nodded. But I can still learn how. It just would be extremely difficult, right? Right. It's very rare for someone to master all five elements. Being able to utilize all five, however, is not unheard of. Most jounin need to master at least three. Kakashi replied. Taking out two scrolls, he passed them to his clones, who were waiting patiently on the side, each with an identical orange book. All right, you two, take Naruto and Sakura off to a corner or something, and help them learn the basics. You know, the lentil chakra creation, spiritual side of it, the usual. With the kids snickering off to the side, he realized his shadow clones were totally ignoring him. Ahem. Kakashi felt his eyebrow twitch in irritation, it seemed to be doing that a lot lately. The two silver-haired clones looked up. We heard you. But I'm at this really good part where Chiko and Kameheim finally get together and they... Shut up. Kakashi thundered. There are kids around, you idiots. The second clone shrugged. Then you should put away the copy you have in your jacket pocket. The three kids were howling in laughter, not because they knew what he was talking about, thank Kami, but because Kakashi's shadow clones weren't listening to their creator. Naruto was slapping his knee, gasping for breath as he calmed down slowly. What's the point of having shadow clones if they don't do whatever you say? Kakashi grunted. I don't really know with a wave of his hand the two clones dispelled, the scrolls dropping to the ground. Weaving the hand signs once again, two more clones took the first two's place. The new one raised his hand. Yo. The second one was about to whip out a certain book when Kakashi sent it a threatening glare that screamed you even look at that book and I will dispel you. Got it? The first clone rolled his eyes and picked up the scroll. Sakura, follow me. The blonde idiot goes with Weirdo over there. Hey. The second one shouted indignantly. We're all the same. Rolling his eyes again, the clone led the pink-haired girl away and towards a small pond. Naruto, the second one grumbled still put out by the first clone's attitude, and beckoned to the blonde. You're coming with me. The blonde kid grinned and followed the clone eagerly, awaiting his chance to learn some super OP and totally awesome jutsu that'll make me look totally cool not that I'm not cool already. Futon Jutsu. The original Kakashi gestured for Sasuke to follow him. Sasuke, you're with me. I have a strong repertoire of both katan and right anjutsu, so you really can pick which you'd like to start with. For once, Sasuke looked thoughtful. I think I'd like to try whichever is easier to master first, to get a strong base to work off of. Once again, the silver-haired jounin was impressed by the wisdom and maturity of the Uchiha's words. Well, fire jutsus are probably easier to master, since it takes an incredible amount of control to keep the lightning tamed when performing jutsu. Plus, the Uchiha clan specializes in katan jutsu, so you ought to have a knack for it. Kakashi reasoned. Sasuke nodded in agreement, and the training began. All right, Sakura. I think we'll start with water, since it's your affinity and all. The clone began. Swait Jutsu is found most commonly in Kirigakure, or the village hidden in the mist. It's a very versatile element, capable of defense, offense, and countering. It's also a pretty easy element to control, unlike fire or lightning, which if it gets out of hand there could be a lot of collateral damage. Now Swait Jutsu may not be the one that packs the most punch, it's still very useful to have in your arsenal. The Pinkette nodded, sitting down in the grass near the river. In order to get the feel of elemental chakra, you have to basically feel the water. Now, I won't pretend I'm an expert at water jutsu in fact, I'd say that's probably my weakest one, besides Futon. But I can still help you out with the basics. Sakura nodded understandingly. Sensei, will I have to be in the water to do this? Her sensei shook his head. No, you don't have to be, but it'll probably help. You see, in order to create Swait on Chakra, you need to feel the water's natural energy, how it flows, how it ebbs, the way it twists and bends, and get an image of its natural power. He paused at Sakura's confused look. Um, let me put it this way. The silver-haired clone walked over to the riverbank. See this water? Sakura gave him a deadpan look that yelled I'm not blind you idiot. Get on with it. Kakashi clone sweat dropped. A rhetorical question. Anyways, you need to understand the water in order to call upon its natural energy inside your body. 
not just use it without knowing what it does. Slowly, the Pinquette understanding seemed to dawn in the Pinquette. Just like how in order to fight with a weapon, you need to understand what it does and how it works. The Jounin clone gave a pleased smile. Exactly. You can't fight with this new chakra unless you become familiar with it and can harness it at will. If you can't call upon it in an instant, on the battlefield you'd be dead. Now, he noted Sakura's look of panic. I'm not expecting you to master it immediately. Heck, I'm not expecting you to master it in the next week. But you need to become familiar with it in order to control it. The Pinquette nodded, silently relieved. So what do I need to do? Kakashi clone gave her an eye smile. It's simple, really. Focus on the water. The girl turned towards the river. Imagine the natural energy radiating off of it. Her brow furrowed. Now take out your hand, and using only your will, try and create water in your palm. Sakura's eyes widened. Be but how do I do that? The girl stuttered. Kakashi sighed, pulling out his trademark orange booklet. It's complicated, but you need to will your chakra to take the form of water's natural energy, and then use that chakra to draw water out of the air and into your palm. The Pinquette winced. I'll try. With a look of uttermost concentration, the girl closed her eyes and breathed in deeply. She used her senses and expanded her vision to the river, listening intently to the rushing sound. Okay, Outerchan, just focus, and keep concentrating in that rushing sound. Can you almost feel the water's energy as it flows downstream? Actually, kind of, almost like I can feel a sort of aura around it. Yup, that's it. Now try and will that energy to take form inside of you. Sakura imagined the sounds of the water, the shimmering of the liquid surface, and the coolness of the temperature, and focused her chakra. She felt for a small pool, like liquid chakra, and concentrated as it began to transform. Kakashi clone, over the top of his book, stood there stunned. Here was a little girl, no younger than six, beginning to create elemental chakra. Most kids couldn't utilize it until at least seasoned genin, and here was a young girl, not even an academy student, doing it on her first try. Prodigies. Truly prodigies. Kakashi clone just wondered if the others were having as much luck as Sakura was. Unfortunately, he'd have to wait until after practice when the clones, including himself, were dispelled to find out. Naruto. 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 Naruto get up you lazy pile of dog feed. GZZH Gahwat? Seriously. Try and listen as I talk. I'm trying to teach you about elemental chakra. But I already know, Kakashi clone sensei. You've said it a million times in your ridiculously long speech I need to transform my normal chakra into elemental chakra by focusing in the natural energy of the element, and then mimicking it. Naruto recited, bored out of his mind. Yes, Naruto, but do you know how to mimic it? The clone asked, one eyebrow raised. That's what I thought. The clone said smugly. Now listen up. Wind is, sadly, my worst element, but I can give you pointers. You need to feel the essence of wind, the freedom, the unpredictability, the barely controlled chaos and channel it into your chakra, before molding it into elemental chakra. Naruto scratched his head. So basically I need to put the feel of wind into my chakra? The clone sweat dropped. Simplified but yes. Ha! Huh. I knew it wasn't nearly as hard as you made it out to be. The blonde sat down in meditation position and began shaking in concentration. The clone sensei sighed and pulled out his book. You know sitting there acting like you're constipated won't do anything, right? Why you? So Sasuke, since I'm pretty sure you know how to mold Katan Chakra already, he got an affirmative nod from the Uchiha. We'll start with the basic exercise. The real Kakashi held out a stick he got from a tree. Hold this. Sasuke, looking at Kakashi dubiously, grabbed the stick and held it firmly in his hand, awaiting further instructions. Using only your fire elemental chakra, light the tip on fire. You're kidding, right? That's almost impossible. Kakashi I smiled. That's where you're wrong, my cute little student. Sasuke scowled. It's actually quite simple. After all, if people can walk on walls, shoot fireballs out of their mouths, create concrete walls instantaneously, and make electricity shoot out of their hands, why not light a twig on fire with nothing but chakra? Sasuke conceded. You have a point. And how do I do that? Feel the burning fire inside of the chakra, the heat, the energy, everything. The concentrate your chakra on the very tip of the twig, and hold your focus there. The black-haired boy stared at the twig in concentration eyes narrowed and focused. And he just stared. And stared. And stared. And stared. Sensei this is taking too long. What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong, Sasuke, Kakashi said with a wave of his hand. This just takes a looing time to master, especially for a six-year-old. The boy pouted, but returned to staring at the twig. Kakashi clone number one was getting really bored. 
Now, watching a six-year-old girl sit in place and meditate was fascinating and all, but seriously, he had reread his book two times already. Even the scene between Naroku and Hikari was getting old, and that was his favorite scene. The clone just sat there wearily, watching the girl's chakra slowly begin to change and pull into elemental chakra, but then plop back down. Then she cleared her head and repeated. Kakashi clone really hoped Kakashi would dispel him soon, lest he die of boredom. Kakashi sensei clone, what am I doing wrong? I can feel the sweat and chakra forming, but when I try and reach out to use it, it almost seems to shatter at my touch. I can't get a grip on it. The frustrated girl cried. The clone patted her on the head. It's amazing you've even made it this far, Pinky. Just keep trying. It always seems to be the hardest at first. Remember the feel of the water, even when you're trying to use it. Sakura nodded softly, and closed her eyes again. She slowly began molding the elemental chakra, making sure to keep the flowing feel of the water firmly in mind. She imagined a whirling ball of blue chakra, like a whirlpool, ready for her to use. But she needed to go with it, not force it. Water would just evade her and slip through her fingers. That's just how the element worked. Doing her best to mimic the flow of the water, she began drawing the chakra out into her hands, noting how moving with the chakra was so much easier than just trying to lasso it and pull it out. Suddenly, her fingertips felt wet, and she opened her eyes to see a tiny trickle of water running down from her hand and a stunned clone sensei. Naruto glared at the leaf. The stupid, annoying, impossible to tear in half without using his hand's leaf. He'd been concentrating on pushing his wind chakra, which he finally managed to do, despite Kaka-sensei clone not being very good at it, into the leaf, and cutting it in half, for the past three or so hours, according to a very annoyed clone. Despite his best efforts, the leaf had yet to split even a tenth of an inch. Arg, this is impossible. Gah. Why did sensei set me up with an impossible exercise? The blonde screamed in irritation, throwing the leaf away in a fit. The clone rolled his eyes. Listen, Naruto, my creator can't even do the exercise after four years of trying. You've been at it for three hours. Take a chill pill. He pulled the book closer to his nose, trying to avoid the sight of Naruto sitting there like he was going to take a dump. Suddenly, Kakashi clone felt a tug. Well, looks like your time is up. See ya. With a poof of smoke, the Kakashi clone disappeared, and Naruto was left staring at the dang leaf. All right, I am so done with this exercise. With that, the blonde began his trek back to the center of the training grounds. Good work, my cute little minions. Kakashi complimented them as they returned to the center. Sasuke managed to make his twig smoke, Sakura managed to get a small stream of water, and Naruto managed to mold his chakra. Naruto glared at the jounin. Hey, I know for a fact that my chakra control is the worst out of the bunch, since I have ridiculously big reserves. He pointed to his sister. Sakura has the smallest, but also the best chakra control, while Sasuke is in between. So obviously I'm going to have the hardest time. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Good analysis, Naruto. Anyways, what I was going to say was I brought you guys some yen. If you want to you can hit the town for some snacks. The three genins stared at him in confusion. It means that you guys can go out and explore the city for a while, buy some food and stuff. Oh. The three kids replied in unison, causing the jounin to laugh. Jeez, with the six days I've had the kids I've laughed more than I have in my entire lifetime. Sakura took a few yen, and told her brothers, I'm going to the dango shop, I'll meet up with you guys there? Naruto grinned. Sure think, Sakachan, me and Sasuke are probably going to explore for a while. Where's the shop? Oh, it's west of the Hokage Tower, over by the Hyuga compound. Sakura replied. Sasuke ruffled her hair. Be careful, Kara. The pinkette giggled. Don't worry, Sasuke, I'll be fine. She smiled mischievously. Besides, who would hurt a young, defenseless girl? Sakura strolled down the busy streets, dressed in a clean white tank top and a cute green skirt that Kakashi, Naruto, and Sasuke, the traitors, had coerced her into wearing. Her bubblegum hair tied in a high ponytail and a few wisps trailing down the edges of her face, she looked in awe at the man's shop she finally could shop in, thanks to Kakashi and his generous allowance. Well, if it isn't forehead girl. A nasal, eerily familiar voice called out. Sakura, wide-eyed, turned on her heel. In the middle of the road stood a clique of about seven girls, each one with their heads high and the latest in civilian clothes, but Sakura only had eyes for the leader of the pack. She had long purple hair and beady brown eyes, and was currently smirking at the pinquette. It was a face that had almost faded from memory, but Sakura would never forget her name. Ami. Sakura snarled. Well, 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 so your parents didn't kill you after all, forehead. What a shame. Ami sneered. So, still wandering the streets like the mangy little mud you are? The girl scoffed. Well, I suppose everyone can't be as lucky as me and my family, along with my fabulous friends here. She smiled at her little group, 
who grinned back in adoration. But still, I really pity your family for having such a useless, ugly, ungrateful, and most of all stupid little bitch as their child. Through it all, the pinquette had her head bowed, arms trembling with barely suppressed rage. She stood silently, taking all the verbal abuse. One of the girls, with flaming red hair and green eyes, called out, Hey dumbass. What's wrong? Not smart enough to think of a comeback. Or are you so stupid you can't even understand what we're saying? She snickered. The other girls laughed mockingly, Ami laughing the hardest and congratulating the girl. Good one, Nazaki. Another girl, this time with brown hair with a delicate silver headband, shouted, Always the poor little baby crying? Oh, don't cry you useless piece of trash. Silent tears ran down Sakura's cheeks as the girls cackled at her pain. No, it wasn't because she was hurt or afraid, no, she could take them down in an instant, being a shinobi. But at the moment, all she could think about was before, when she was still there, haunting her every move. Flashback. A young girl, barely even four, with beautiful pink hair was sitting by the swings, wishing to get away from her parents. What's wrong, forehead? A purple-haired girl purred. Your parents mad at you. I don't blame them. You're so lame and dumb I'm surprised they haven't given up already. Stop it. Mommy and daddy love me. The girl cried. The other girl laughed. Yeah, sure looks like it your own parents don't want you. A cute young little girl, her hair done in braids, was listening to her mother in horror. Yes, Sakura is such an ill-mannered child. I'm sure this play date with such a wonderful role model like Ami would straighten her out a bit her mother patted the child next to her fondly. Said girl was smirking at the pinquette. We're gonna have so much fun together. Oh. No. Mommy, please beg the girl as her mother hit her again. You ungrateful little brat. You hit a poor, innocent girl and now her parents hate us. Our social relations are ruined thanks to you. Thwack. Now please stop. She screamed. Outside the window, a certain purple-haired girl was smirking in victory. Ami. W what are you doing here? A four-year-old Sakura stuttered. Ami grinned maliciously. Why, your awesome mommy set up another play date, Sakura, since you're my best friend and all. The pinkhead backed away from the girl. No, she get away from me. The girl only laughed. Time for our favorite game, beautiful huntress and ugly monster. You obviously can't be the huntress, so. Sakura sniffled. Well, I am ten times prettier than you, who's ugly inside and out. She screamed bravely. Ami's eyes widened in shock, before narrowing in rage. You're going to pay for that. Thwack. Sakura glared fiercely at the clique. What do you want? Ami scoffed. It isn't obvious? Well, you're definitely more brain dead than I thought. She ran forwards and with a sudden kick knocked the pinquette down on her back, causing her to cry out in pain. Sakura grabbed her ribs painfully, looking up at her childhood bully with hatred in her jade eyes. A third girl, this time with blue blackish hair and a satin dress, reached forwards to tug on Sakura's long pink tresses. Sakura felt fresh tears gathering as she desperately tried to pull her hair away from them but to no avail. The girl's high-heeled black boot came down hard on her chest, and she was held in place. Jeez, how lame is she, not even fighting back and crying like the little baby she is. Ami snickered as she advanced towards the pinquette, whom was steadily growing more and more afraid. What if she couldn't take them all on? After all, their parents would side with the kids if she attacked, and Ami's parents were on the civilian council. She couldn't do anything without fear of punishment. Hey! Get away from our sister! A familiar voice snarled. What do you bitches think you're doing? Another spat. I'm not really liking the look of this situation. You girls better have an explanation for picking on my surrogate daughter or there will be hell to pay. A third, older voice commented, hostility clear in every word. Sakura felt relief flow through her as the pressure on her hair receded and the girls backed up into a tight group. Sakura, through the tears, felt two strong arms pick her up and onto their back. Her view was blocked by Spiky gravity-defying silver hair. Keikakashi sensei Sakura muttered, still clutching her chest. Her sensei hushed her. Shoo, sure, it's okay Sakura. He shifted, turning to where she assumed her brothers were. Do whatever you like, boys. Granting full permission for non-lethal force. He told with undisguised malice. Sakura could tell that Kakashi was barely keeping himself from beating them up himself. Kakashi sensei, take Kura back home. I don't really want her to see this. Naruto, you do realize she'll probably enjoy this as much as she will? I know that's Sasuke, but look at her. She's sobbing and they were stepping on her chest I bet she's hurt. All right, Dobe, let's talk more fighting. They're gonna pay for this. Agreed. As Sakura felt Kakashi take to the rooftops, she couldn't help but smile. She had her boys, and they'd look out for her, just like she would for them. Naruto, Sasuke, Kakashi thank you. Setting the injured girl down on the couch, 
Kakashi tried to channel his inner father. Sakura, honey, what happened? He asked gently, plopping down next to her. The pink-haired girl sniffed pitifully and brought her knees up in the bed, letting her arms curl around her in a tight ball. Kakashi, rather hesitantly, wrapped his arms around her. He flinched, not knowing what to expect as a reaction. A hug? More tears? A slap? Luckily, the young girl did none of those, and instead leaned into the man's chest, letting her sniffles die down and clutching his shirt rather tightly. Kakashi smiled at her, though inside he was to say the least, freaking out. Damn it, my arms are shaking. I can't deal with crying girls' ugh. Here goes nothing. Are you hurt too badly? He asked, trying to keep his voice low and soothing, like he did with a wounded neen dog from his pack. He pulled one of the blankets up so it covered her knees. She shook her head weakly. And no, I'm okay, but my chest hurts. She said quietly, placing a hand on her wounded chest. I think it might be bruised. She sniffed. Kakashi growled lowly. No one had the right to hurt his daughter. Emerald eyes gazed fearfully at him as Kakashi realized he was radiating killer intent so strong it probably would have sent Figaku Uchiha running in fright. Oh sweetie, I'm so it's okay. I'm not mad at yo SHHH. Don't cry. I'm mad at whoever did this to you, Pinky. Not you. You did nothing wrong. Fumbling over his worlds, the silver-haired man inwardly groaned. He was so whipped. Standing up once again, the silver-haired man patted her head, secretly desperate for an escape. You stay here. I'll go get some bandages and an ice pack. The pinkette nodded once and burrowed her head into her hands. Kakashi felt his heart clench at the tear-jerking sight. Some fucker had done this to his charge, to his surrogate daughter, and Kakashi had a feeling the boys would not let whoever did this off easily. That was really the only reason why Kakashi wasn't hunting the bitch down himself. As a matter of fact, he wondered what they were doing now. Ami stood fearfully as two incredibly hotandriela scary boys stared her down, their malice clear and their knuckles cracking. Their eyes were covered in shadow and their shadows stretched way away further than they should. The first boy was cute in a goofy kind of way, with spiky blonde hair and a sky-blue jumpsuit and ninja sandals. Two pouches were strapped to his waist. His goofiness, however, was not present as he glared at her with a passion. The second one was seriously hot. She was seven. She could have crushes if she wanted, with dark hair and eyes, and simple black long-sleeved shirt and black cargo pants, along with black ninja-issue sandals. He too had two pouches strapped to his waist and like the other boy, he was burning holes into her forehead. UUM, WW what can I H help you W with? She tried to say but stuttered painfully. She inwardly cursed. No you idiot. Now they're going to be even madder. I bet they saw everything. The blonde one, he was cute, she'd give him that scowled. You're really giving us that crap? He laughed humorlessly. You think we're that dumb? And no of course no Ami tried to pacify him, waving her arms in surrender. He glowered. We're. Not. Idiots. Ami shook her head furiously. No, 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 I'm sorry. I just. The black-haired boy, Amsahohat, reached into a hip pouch and drew out a kunai. Bitch. You should know better than to pick on your superiors. He turned to the blonde. Well, what do you think we should do to her? The blonde smirked evilly, and it may have been the light but his eyes flashed red. Ami began trembling in fear. She hurt Karachan, and she's not going to get away with it. He paused. No killing, though. I'm not washing my hands in blood for this worthless thing. The other boy shook his head. You're such a dope. Of course we're not going to kill her. Shinobi aren't allowed to hurt civilians. Ami scowled. She was entering the academy in a few weeks. She was not a civilian. Shut up, both of you. She yelled, her anger taking control. I'm going to the academy, and I'll become a genin. The blonde raised an eyebrow. You. A ninja? He began to laugh. No, guffaw. Tears sprang to his eyes as he laughed harder than he'd ever done before. The other boy chuckled darkly. Please. You're unfit. You're wearing that stupid and seriously unattractive. And you said my clothes were ugly team. Dress, you don't have any weapons or combat experience. And worst of all, your attitude. He glared. Kara is going to be a ninja too, and she's already 100 times better than pathetic scum like you. Ami felt her confidence deflate out of her like a pop balloon, and she felt her cheeks flame in humiliation. Why you're going to be ninja too? She was going to have to deal with them in the academy? The older one rolled his eyes. We just said that, dumbass. Heat rushed to her face as the insult hit her like a sharp knife. Her temper began to rise. Hey, don't call me that. She screamed in rage. Why do you care about that dumb pink-haired bitch anyways? She's a demon. A no good. A stupid, worthless piece of trash. Both boys froze in their tracks. 
Ami immediately knew something was very, very wrong. You, the black-haired boy began in an eerily quiet and calm voice, want to know why we care about our own sister? He chuckled mirthlessly. You want to know why we protect her? Ami's eyes were widened in fear now. You're her brothers? She whispered in horror. What had she just done? They were doing to hurt her for sure. Sakura is our sister. The blonde spoke up coldly. She's our best friend, our precious person, the only one who cared about us. His voice crescendoed into a full-on shout. You have no right to say any of that about her, you bitch. The girl held her hands over her face. Please, go away. I don't want to be hurt. She begged. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pathetic. The blonde's voice was deeper now, full of malice, almost demonic. You claim you're going to be a ninja when you can't even stand up for yourself, and pick on others just to make your poor little self feel better? His eyes flashed red. The purple-haired girl began backing away fearfully. And no. Get away. WW what are you going to do to me? I don't know yet. The dark-haired boy spoke once again. But you hurt our sister, and that is unforgivable. He narrowed his eyes. You. Will. Pay. SS Sensei? Kakashi stopped in his tracks and focused his gaze on the girls. The young child held the ice pack to her chest vigorously. Yes, Sakura? She looked down nervously. Why you want to know W what happened, all right? She whispered. Setting the band-aids down carefully, he sat down next to the pinkette and wrapped an arm around her. Tell me everything. The young girl took a deep breath. All right, she clasped her hands together quietly. I was born to a civilian family, a wealthy one at that. My parents, for as long as I can remember, was very concerned about wealth and social status. My parents owned the Haruno Enterprises after all. Kakashi's lone eye widened. Why didn't he make the connection before but why was the heir to such a powerful company abandoned? I was a different child. My pink hair and green eyes were very uncommon, as a matter of fact, practically unheard of. Who do you know besides me that has pink hair or green eyes? Kakashi opened his mouth to respond and closed it again. Now that he thought about, he'd never seen another person with eyes like hers, except in Suna where a couple of shinobi had Turku's green eyes. And pink hair is almost unheard of, no matter where you were. Sakura seemed to expect his reaction. So my parents never really thought of me as a daughter, more like a failed attempt to make the perfect Haruno heir as mother always said. She laughed bitterly. The other families were no better. I don't really know about everything, but I do know that there were nasty rumors about me, all because of my looks. She fingered her long pink hair. Kakashi stared at the young girl in sympathy, realizing that this was why she was so grown up and mature for her Ajesh never known anything different. Nothing but bias, hate, judgment and scorn. I was never good enough for my parents. Never. They wouldn't take me out of the house, they'd lock me up and try and educate me on being a good heir but nothing worked. No matter what, everyone hated me. Her hands clenched, and a lone tear trickled down her cheek. My parents hated me because of how I was ruining their reputation as a demon girl, so they took out their rage on me. They would scream and belittle me, a and faith even the young girl gasped and tears began overflowing from her emerald eyes with new rigor, unable to continue. Sakura? Kakashi asked worriedly. They they hit me, she cried. Her sobs echoed in Kakashi's mind. They hit me. They hit me. They hit me. Kakashi's blood ran cold. He felt his hands clench in anger and looked down on the crying girl. A parent hurting their child? Unforgivable. Those people would pay. But Sakura needed him first. Naruto shook with rage. These bitches were the ones that hurt Sakura. They hurt his Karachan. They hurt his little sister. They hurt his precious person. The blonde snarled with an animalistic rage as he glared down the stupid purple-haired one. If you weren't a Kanoha civilian, you'd be six feet under right now. Sasuke growled lowly, Naruto nodding alongside of him. You are a disgusting bitch who doesn't hold a freaking candle to our sister. And you're going to pay for everything you've done. The black-haired boy finished. He cracked his knuckles. If the girl looked scared before, she looked going to wet her pants terrified now. Sasuklitz cut her hair. She seems to really like it. Naruto suggested. Nah, Sasuke dismissed. Not severe enough. But that can start. Tiami. Naruto argued. We don't have time for this. We gotta beat her up and then get back to Karachan. She needs us now. He crossed his arms. Besides, we'll be breaking the rules if we beat her up too much. So. True, Naruto admitted. But Karachan needs us more than we want payback. TCH. Naruto had to give him credit. When it came to his family, Sasuke was the most loyal person alive. Fine. Pulling a kanai out of his holster, Naruto turned to the other boy. Restrain her? 
with pleasure. Sasuke replied with a smirk and seemingly vanished into thin air, being the fastest of the two. The bitch, he didn't know her name, and wasn't going to bother asking, pulled her hands over her head and screamed, No! No my hair, please! Sasuke reappeared behind the bitch and threw a hard kick at he abdomen. Thwack! The bitch went sailing four feet in the air and seemingly back flipped before landing in an undignified heap. She screamed. Naruto felt strange energy start flowing through him as his thoughts began to twist. He enjoyed that scream. That realization both chilled his blood and set it afire. She deserved it. She deserved that and more. He would make her scream like that over and over. She would pay. The energy seemed to encourage him. Yes. Kill her. She deserves to suffer. She has no right to do what she did. Make her pay. The only thing holding him back was the thought of his sister. Her kind, smiling face beaming at him as she giggled and said, Naruto and I, what did you do this time? If Sakura saw him carry through with his thoughts, she'd never forgive him. He shook his head. His thoughts cleared. His rage subsided, like someone pulled the plug of a bathtub and the water goes rushing down the drain. His violent thoughts went swirling out of him in one big rush. He could think clearly. Naruto took a deep breath and couldn't help but wonder what the heck was that. Meanwhile, Sasuke, never one to do a half-assed job, followed through with the kick and sent a solid punch into her pretty face. She screamed again, blood trailing from her nose and her eyes bloodshot and tears. Sasuke! Naruto shouted. Enough! I'll cut her hair and let's get going. That was the first time the blonde ever saw Sasuke pout. S-H-H-H-H-H, it's alright Sakura. They can't hurt you anymore. Kakashi cooed, rather awkwardly in his opinion, as her sobs slowly decreased into sniffles as she clutched his vest like a lifeline. KKK Kakashi Sensei, pee permission you won't sniff abandon me too? She pleaded, her emerald orbs quivering pitifully. Promise? Kakashi's heart once again clenched. It wasn't the abuse that she feared. It wasn't being an outcast. She was afraid of being abandoned again. He swore on the graves of Rin and Abito that her parents would pay. Of course, Sakuchan. I promise. She gave him a weak smile. I like that nickname M much better than the last O one. She giggled softly, sniffling again. The silver-haired man smiled gently. I'm glad, Sakuchan. For once, Kakashi felt like he finally did something right. Setting her down on the bed once again, he asked, Would you like something to eat? I'll make you some miso soup if you want. Nodding weakly, the little pinkette agreed. Yes, pee please. She sniffed. Nodding, the man stepped into the hallway, closing the door softly behind him. He needed to buy some miso soup. But first, check in on the boys. Kakashi managed a rather feral grin. He had a feeling the poor, no, not really, little bitch would get what she deserved. No, uh. The horrible, screeching, irritating, annoyingly high-pitched scream echoed throughout the civilian district. The citizens, however, had better things to do than worry over a spoiled brat who probably dropped her teddy bear into a puddle or something, and conveniently ignored it. The purple-haired bitch was collapsed on the ground, her beautiful dress muddy and ripped, scratches and bruises covering her arms and legs, but that wasn't the best part in Sasuke's opinion. Oh no. The best part was the bitch's hair was in tatters around her, like a newly unwrapped present on Christmas. He had heard of the holiday from another kid while shopping for ninja weapons, and assumed it was some kind of extra birthday celebration. The ugly plum-shaded hair was scattered across the road, some strands longer than others. The true masterpiece, however, was her almost bald head. There were a few long strands trailing, which made it look weird, and some places were incredibly uneven and ugly-looking. In Sasuke's opinion, however, it wasn't easy to make her look uglier than she already was, but hey, this was the one time where he acknowledged Naruto as a true genius. TCH. Not like he'd ever say it in the idiot's face. Otherwise his ego would inflate till he popped. The bitch was sobbing uncontrollably on the ground, clutching her ruined hair and dress and screaming in rage, you'll pay for this, before bursting into tears again. Sasuke found it rather funny. Aiming another kick at her stomach, Sasuke let an evil smirk slip onto his face. Thump. Sasuke's foot connected, but not with the bitch. Instead, he looked up to see the rather displeased face of his sensei. Crap. I can't believe you'd actually beat her up Sasuke winced. Naruto began, sensei, but we were. Without me. Kakashi finished, pouting. Sasuke's sweat dropped, while Naruto stated at him with his defuck face. PSSH, you really think this thing, he gestured to the sobbing girl, is going to get away with bullying and hurting my little Sakuchan? The man glared at the bitch in question. Hold on, Naruto interrupted raising his hands so you aren't gonna get mad at us. Sweet. Kakashi rolled his eyes. 
Whatever now move, Sasuke. I normally don't tolerate beating up civilians at this time. I think I'll have to make an exception. Sasuke rolled his eyes at his sensei's dramatics, while Naruto snickered on TH's sidelines. Jeez, it sounds like a cheesy line from a movie sensei. He laughed. Pouting slightly, Kakashi once again asked, Sasuke, just move already. HN, Sasuke grumbled, but nonetheless stepped to the side and allowed Kakashi to have his fun. Stand up. Kakashi ordered the girl harshly. Ami seemed to not comprehend what he was saying, and was instead curled up on the ground murmuring in constant nothings. Nanag's gum and my HH hair what's so cruel. I said get up. Kakashi ordered again, killing intent radiating off of every word. Ami, scared and eyes wide, shakily stood her feet. It's time for me to use my secret, original jutsu. Kakashi said eerily. Both boys leaned forwards in anticipation. Oh. What is it? Will it hurt? Naruto asked gleefully. Kakashi smirked. Leaf village secret finger jutsu. One thousand years of death. And with that, Ami, her face twisted in a shocked expression, went head over ugly shoes into a conveniently close river, where she landed with a splat. Eh. Hey. She screamed, all dignity destroyed and her humiliation complete. Kakashi, satisfied with his work, dusted his hands off and turned to his other two kids. Both Naruto and Sasuke were staring at him, eyes wide and shiny. Kakashi-sensei that was so cool you gotta teach me to do that someday. Naruto hollered. Kakashi smiled. Sure thing, kid. But first, we gotta get Sakuchan some miso. He sent them a suspicious glance. And by the way where did you learn all those swear words? Naruto's expression was rather sheepish. Karakayan, we're home. Naruto sang as he, Kakashi and Sasuke entered the front door. Karachan? You here? Naruto asked, waiting for a response. Kakashi's eyebrow raised. Check the bedroom, she's probably taking a nap. He set down the package of miso the boys managed to get from the shopkeeper for free. But Ms. Shopkeeper, our sister is sick and we don't have enough to pay for medicine and the soup. Could we please just have one packet, please? Sakura? Sasuke called. Are you in here? He rapped his knuckles on the door. Sure. Dog. Naruto hushed. She's probably sleeping. Kakashi sweat dropped. I just said that he muttered, but he went unnoticed as the two boys entered the girl's room. They stopped in the doorway to see a small figure with distinctive pink hair sleeping in the bed, covers pulled up to her chin and face nuzzled into a teddy bear that definitely wasn't in the house before. Naruto and Sasuke both said in unison, albeit Sasuke much quieter. Kawaii. Ten minutes later. Naruto? Sasuke? Come here, I need you to help me Kakashi paused. Setting the soup down, he began walking down the hallway, careful for any traps or pranks. No response. Boys? He tried again, waiting for an argument, someone calling him old man, anything. Still no response. Boys, if this is a prank it's not funny. He finished lamely as he entered their bedroom. He stopped in front of the doorway and stared. There slept the three siblings, each next to the other and bundled together very snugly. Sakura was sucking her thumb. Did kids really do that? Kakashi had to wonder, while Naruto murmured in his sleep. Something a butcherman? Kakashi looked left and right, and sent out his chakra to check for any snoopers. Nothing in the immediate area. Kakashi then whispered a silent genjutsu that would make anyone around not see or hear him. Serentona Kenkaio no jutsu. He let the rippling illusion take place before once again sweeping the area. Satisfied that he was alone, he whispered. Kawaii. Naruto? Sakura? Sasuke? Get up! Kakashi shouted, pulling up the blinds and letting the blinding morning sunlight enter the room. Groaning, the pinkette was the first one of the trio up. A Kakashi sensei what she yawned. Sasuke and Naruto both refused to budge, the latter one of the two clutching the blankets and muttering, Gwei, I double you not sleep. His voice was muffled from the pillow his head was currently burrowed into. Sasuke, however, slept like a rock, and Kakashi knew as well as anyone that you should just let sleeping Uchiha lie. Scratching his head, Kakashi asked Sakura, how do I get those two up? Sakura laughed. Make ramen and tomato slices for breakfast. They'll notice immediately. She slipped out of the covers and stretched her arms. But make dango for me, please. Kakashi rolled his eyes. Sakura, you can't have dessert for breakfast. But Sakura objected. No. Kakashi told her firmly. Come on, please. She begged. No. The girl, however, wasn't told off easily and threatened with quivering green eyes, Kakashi finally obliged. Ugh fine. Clapping happily, the pinkhead grabbed her training outfit and skipped into the bathroom. Naruto, wide-eyed and looking around blearily, asked, Did someone say ramen? And why was Karachan skipping? 
Kakashi sighed, watching the three demons spawn devouring their unique breakfasts. Sakura munched on her syrup-drenched dango. So, Sensei, why were you getting us up this early? She pouted. Yeah. Naruto shouted, slurping his ramen like there was no tomorrow. Sasuke, social as always, silently chewed his tomato slices. Kakashi sighed. All right, you three, Hokage-sama sent me a message today. You guys got to go to the hospital for a checkup, since you three are long overdue for one. He got three different reactions. A checkup? We have to get a checkup? Wait, what's a checkup? Ugh. Seriously? Ah, come on. Kakashi cleared his throat. A checkup is basically where you go to the doctor's office and they see if you're sick. Naruto frowned. But we aren't sick. Naruto, they're making sure you aren't sick. Kakashi groaned. But I would know if I was sick. Last time I got sick I was barfing everywhere and was really, really cold and my forehead hurt. And I sneezed a lot. Naruto retorted. Kakashi blanched. There are some diseases that you don't notice. But if you don't notice, they don't matter, right? In order for them to hurt you, they need to do something to you. And if they do something, then you'll notice them. Kakashi sighed. But there are some diseases, though, never mind. Just do it, Hokisama's orders. Sakura spoke up. But why is Hokage-sama making us go to the doctor's office? Doesn't he have better things to do, like paperwork? Kakashi scratched his head. Erto, be honest, I have no idea. Sasuke groaned. I've been to a checkup before. Not fun. He sighed. Let's get this over with. Kakashi pitted the poor man. Well, what do you mean by where do babies come from? Naruto grinned his megawatt smile. Well, I heard a bunch of kids at the orphanage talking about how babies come from birds that deliver the baby on the porch and I told them it wasn't true because then we'd see flying babies with birds everywhere and they said it was true and I said it wasn't and we argued about it for about four hours. So I made a goal that if I ever saw a doctor the first thing I'd do is ask them since the orphanage lady said to ask a doctor if I ever wanted to know the real answer. He told him, all in one breath. The poor doctor blanched. Well, you see? Sakura grinned. Come on, Kaguki-sensei, tell us. Yeah, we want to know. Even Sasuke joined in. The man was shaking, desperately thinking of a way to avoid the topic. Er, do you kids like lollipops? What's that got to do with anything? Yes, Kakashi pitted the poor man. Watching the three kids as the mercilessly teased the poor doctor pulled at Kakashi's heartstrings. Kakashi remembered a time, long before his life had taken a turn for the worse, when he and his team were so similar happy, carefree, and most of all innocent. Abito, the cheerful and notorious prankster, would grin cheekily before activating his latest prank. Rin, the kind and sweet one, albeit one with more of a temper, would smack him upside his head and scold him. And Kakashi, forever the loner, would roll his eyes and pretend not to know them all while Minato-sensei watched on with proud, knowing eyes. What's wrong, Dr. San? You're turning red. Did our questions scare you? Naruto asked, his eyes gleaming with mischief and pretend ignorance. Kakashi was fairly sure the doctor knew as well as he did that there was no way the brat was genuinely curious and innocent about it. Yeah, Dr. San. Sakura chirped, Sasuke nodding silently. Tell us. No, there was no way they were innocent. But all the same, he envied their purity their light-heartedness. Traits that he would never have, not with his hands stained and his heart in shatters. Not with the darkness he was hiding in. But these kids. Sakura turned to Sasuke and whispered something in his ear, and the boy in turn whispered something to Naruto. Said boy immediately had a face-splitting grin that spoke volumes. Kakashi dreaded what the little devil was planning in that mischievous mind of his. It took all of Kakashi's willpower not to ruffle his hair, something he'd never done in his life. Those kids were slowly worming their way into his heart, and he had done reckless and out-of-character things because of it. He smiled almost every day. He made breakfast for seven, since the three kids could eat two man's meals each, and wore a white frilly apron, come on, Kakashi-sensei. At least it's not pink, while cooking. Hell, he broke a vow he had made years ago revenge is not the answer. No matter how much you yearn for it, it will only bring sadness and tragedy. He committed a grave crime, attacking a civilian a crime that could get him demoted again, fined, arrested, or worse. All in the name of these three little children. Uh, Kakashi-sensei, since Dr. Sam refuses to answer, will you tell us? Naruto spoke up brightly, tugging on the jounin's vest. Do these kids have a thing with tugging articles of clothing? Yeah, where do babies come from? Sakura asked, with a glimmering smile to match. Well, you see, Kakashi began, unsure of how exactly to respond to that awkward question. I'll tell you when you're older. But by then, it'll be the academy's job, he added mentally. All three protested. 
But. Come on, sensei. Oh, I can't wait that long. I want to be a mommy when I grow up. That one made Kakashi choke. No, you three have a long wait before you can learn that. Kakashi spoke firmly, eyes still wide and slightly horrified. Pouting, the blonde nodded glumly before turning to the doctor's desk. Hey, Dr. San, can I have one of those lollipops? He shouted, all cheeriness and loudness back at full force. The doctor, nodding weakly, was suddenly ambushed with a chorus of, Arigato, and the scurrying of feet across the room to collect their multicolored bounty. Kakashi sighed. Those kids. They were innocent. They were innocent, and he was not. They were changing him, with those kind faces and childish actions. It was strange. He was different. He was almost happy. All because of the innocence and kindness of just three little kids. Sensei, I think Dr. San just fell asleep on the floor. And he dropped his clipboard. And Kakashi swore with his dying breath that he'd protect that innocence of theirs for as long as possible. He cursed. He wasn't doing a great job. He was trying to teach them how to be killers. No. Not anymore. If they wanted to learn, so be it. But he refused to make that decision for them any longer. Um, Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked. Yes, Sakura? Kakashi asked absentmindedly. What are you reading? Kakashi swore. And sensei, what's the meaning of sure? I didn't say a word. You will forget I ever said that. Sensei, I still remember what you said. God dang it. Kakashi was horrible at being a father. A shinobi? Fine. A sensei? Sure. A commander? Piece of cake. But a father? Anyway, sensei, what is that book about? The pink-haired girl asked curiously. Kakashi began sweating. Oh, Eretz about about. She pouted. Why won't you tell me? I'm smart enough to be reading grown-up books. I read History of Kanahigakur and its ninja cover to cover at age five. Well, you see, this book isn't really interesting for you, Kakashi tried. She frowned. But of course it's interesting. Why else would you spend our entire training time reading it? She nudged her shoulder over to the other two kids, who were currently locked in a contest of see who can force the other to give up their dessert by using violence to make the other surrender game. They've been at it for almost a whole hour, and you haven't even noticed. Scratching his head, Kakashi tried to explain why she couldn't read it without mentioning you know. This novel isn't good for little kids, since they'll probably think it's gross. She tilted her head. Gross? There's kissing. Kakashi blurted. Responding immediately, Sakura gagged. That's what you're reading? Kissing? Ew. She yelled. Yeah. Kissing. Kakashi repeated. And a whole lot of other stuff too. Hey, Naruto, Sasuke. Sakura shouted to the boys, who stopped wrestling to listen. Kakashi reads books about people kissing. Both boys reacted in a way similar to Sakura. Eeewew. They screamed. Nasty. Kakashi groaned. Hey, sensei, we haven't had a third training session since the last demonic one Naruto pointed out. Aren't you gonna keep training us? Muttering under his breath, he added, not that I'd be complaining if you stopped. Kakashi sighed. Naritoid was a quite frankly mistake to start training you three this early he brought his hands to his face. I'm clueless about kids. I assumed that all children were like me when they were younger smart, strong, and always training. But seeing you three, even though you're hardened from the streets, you still have this kiddiness about you that I always lacked. And I'm sorry. I forced you into something you may not have wanted to do in the first place, you all were so desperate. From now on, I'll be training you once a week, and a second time if you're willing. He crouched down to the blonde boy who was staring at Kakashi in wonder. Yuri really willing to give us a choice? He said softly, looking more vulnerable than ever. 2V never had choices in my life. Gone was the fun-loving, loud-mouthed blonde, and in his place was a hurt, lonely little boy that Kakashi had never seen. Kakashi felt his heart twinge. Of course, Naruto. I promise. Sasuke clenched his fists as he pounded on the training bag outside of the house. He didn't realize, however, that since he was so small his training looked rather silly. Feeling someone come up behind him, he, without turning, said, Naruto, what do you want? A deeper voice chuckled. I can assure you I'm not that immature. Sasuke turned to the person, the tips of his ears reddening. Kakashi-sensei, he said flatly. The silver-haired man nodded, before turning to a tree a few feet away. He gestured with his hand. Come here. Obediently, the young Uchiha left his punching bag behind and followed his surrogate dad over to the tree, where he plopped down. He felt Kakashi settle down next to him and speak. You're angry about something. He noted. It wasn't a question. Yes. 
The silver-haired man didn't say a word, just staring up at the clouds as they drifted lazily by. Sasuke slumped on defeat. I'm mad about a lot of things. I don't want to talk about it. With a soft sigh, Kakashi reached over and poked the boy on the forehead. Sasuke. The former Uchiha's eyes widened before he slapped his hand away, much to the shock of one silver-haired man. In an instant, Kakashi felt the boy leap up and glare at him fiercely. Don't you ever do that again. Kakashi was taken aback at the anger this boy had inside of him, especially at such a simple action. The young Uchiha spinned on his heel and stormed back towards the house, presumably to find Naruto or Sakura. Kakashi sighed dejectedly. Sakura stared out the window, watching dejectedly as the civilians and ninja alike made their way across the busy streets to their destinations. She laid her head in her lap and hugged her knees to her chest. You never answered my question, you know. Sakura knew that mature baritone. Sensei, she acknowledged. The silver-haired man plopped down next to her, making the bed shake. Care to fill me in? Sakura turned her emerald gaze away from the window. Why do you want to know so badly? Kakashi slumped, his shoulders sagging and his demeanor changing. Too screwed up. I need to focus more on you as a person, and less as a shinobi. I've been treating you all too roughly and I'm sorry. The pinkette smiled. I'll tell you. And so she talked. She talked about how Ami was her childhood bully, how her parents favored her over their own daughter, how Ami's parents were rich and associates of her parents, how she was bad and was punished for it, how Ami came back to haunt her. Kakashi listened with a slightly hesitant hovering, almost as though he was unsure of how to help her. Sakura finished, looking up at him. Thanks for listening. Kakashi smiled. Daddy? Kakashi fainted. Whether it was from surprise or happiness, he will never know. The silver-haired man was practically shaking in excitement. He looked again at the letter, trying to make sure it was for real. Dear Kakashi-kun. Hi. I know it's been a long time, and I can't tell you much, but I've finally finished it. My latest masterpiece. It's beautiful. I have named her Aika Aika Summer in honor of Samethe. I don't really know yet. But, my wonderful fan, you are the first to know. Go on down to the bookstore. I had one of my frogs send the first copies over there to be sold. Jiraiya the super pervert. It was real. Okami. He had to go to the bookstore right away and. Sensei I thai. Crud. Sensei. I'm bored. Do you have any books to read? He could work with this. Fifteen minutes later. What do you mean, you need to go by yourself? We'll get lost. Naruto complained. Yeah. Sasuke muttered. Why are you running off? Kakashi breathed deeply. Do not murder them. Do not murder them. I need to go get some top secret shinobi books. You can't come with me. He lied. Sakura, seemingly buying the story, shrugged. Just take us to the kids section. She requested, read, ordered. Kakashi almost rolled his eyes. Fine, fine. Five minutes later. He 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 Kakashi cradled the precious blue book in his hands lovingly. Meanwhile, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura found a very interesting book. One titled Pranks, Gags, and Practical Jokes. The ultimate collection. Oh boy. Hiko was having a rotten day to begin with. First, he woke up late. That was a big no-no for someone working in his department. What did he mean by department? Why, the Kanoha Cleanup Corps, of course. The Kanoha Cleanup Corps was a civilian-based corporation that dealt with the less fun parts of Kanoha. It was filthy, it was hard, and it was humiliating. Every worker from the KCC would be subjected to immediate ridicule if spotted by the shinobi of the Leaf Village. Being in the KCC was no cushy office job. All corps were required to do daily rounds of public you guessed it cleaning. Be it public toilets, parks, streets, garbage disposal areas, or wherever the hell people were making a mess, the KCC would clean it up. No fancy machines, no amazing jutsu, just a man's, or woman's, two hands, a mop, and a hell of a lot of detergent. It was an unspoken rule that unless you were desperate, delusional, or forced into it, no willing person joined the KCC. It was a hard job, working from 8 to 10 every day. If you did a good job, you'd get two Sundays a month off. Yes, it was definitely a fun job. As a worker there, Hiko had an unbiased opinion on exactly why that was so. The job was utter. Hell. There were no benefits besides the paycheck, which was barely above the bare minimum wage. No health benefits, no insurance, not even an office space. When you worked in the KCC, your office was the streets of Kanoha. Workers at the KCC were worked to the bone. They would be on patrol, all the time, every day they worked. The one good side, not much of a good side at all, however, was that the corps accepted anyone willing into their ranks, be them old, young, polite, rude, 
civilians or criminals, long as they do their job and obey their leader, the head of department. Their head of department, Uranokika, was an intimidating lady of six feet two inches with the attitude of an elephant with a toothache. She was brunette, tough, and scary to match, as well as lucky enough to get the easiest job in the entire department. Paperwork. Yes, Hiko heard many complaints about how doing paperwork was a burden and unholy and fucking irritating but honestly, if he got to choose between cleaning ten million toilets that smelled like something had died in them or sign some papers, he would pick the paperwork in a heartbeat. As some of his less than satisfied co-workers often said, Ms. Kiko was a lucky bitch. But back to his day. Second. His coffee machine broke. As a man in his early thirties, coffee was a necessity for getting through the day alive. It was the holy grail of his life and his machine was normally his favorite possession he owned normally, that is. Today, all he wanted was to shove it down some irritating person's throat. Third, he forgot to wear his coat. It was one of those windy days where the chill seems to settle into your bones and fill your veins like liquid ice, and no matter what you do you can't seem to get warm. Now, normally Hiko was careful to watch the weather reports, but in this case he just forgot in the race to get out the door and report at their headquarters before eight. And finally, that lead him to the current situation. He was superglued to a fucking bathroom wall. Exactly how and why this happened he didn't know. Five minutes earlier he was tiredly cleaning his 400th or so toilet when a little girl, probably five or six, asked him for directions. She were cute, he supposed, with her doe eyes and squeaky prepuberty, she had freaking pink hair. The girl happily nodded when he directed Kara as she introduced herself to the bookstore, he didn't know why her parents weren't with them but was too tired to care, and he turned around, about to get back to work when he felt a push on his back and the next thing he knew. He was stuck to the wall with his arms awkwardly raised to his sides and his head at an unnatural angle. His face got a perfect view of the unpleasant smelling concrete his cheek was currently smushed against. He could hear tinkling laughter as it disappeared from his range of hearing. That girl. She was guilty. He just knew it. Damn you, Kara. Sori was having a good day. Her team had just come back from a long-term mission in Kumogakure, and she was more than ready to come home. It was a dangerous mission, classified as S-rank, or an ANBU-level mission. Now, most might wonder what three Chunin and a Jounin were doing on that kind of mission, but Sori and her team were special. Unlike most teams, her squad didn't specialize in sabotage, or combat, or tracking. No, her team was trained as an infiltration team. Since she was eight, armed with her keen deception skills, rather mischievous attitude and refined genjutsu talent, she was specially trained, along with her teammates, to become one of Kanoha's best infiltrators. Her official rank might be Chunin, but her sensei had told her in private that it was only a cover for their ANBU rank skills in information gathering and infiltration. Her teammates, Inori and Hisoka, had similar traits. Inori was a member of the Yamanaka clan, and while not part of the famous Inoshikacho trio, he was still formidable in his own right. His clan's mind jutsus allowed him to literally steal someone's body and blend in perfectly. But that wasn't the only part of his skill. Being a Yamanaka prodigy, he could shift through someone's thoughts without occupying their body and could perfectly match the mannerisms of those around him. It was a barely detectable trick and very handy for passing along information on surroundings to his teammates. Hisoka was of the Azamuka clan, originating in the distant land of Suki no Kuni, and was known for being mysterious and often deceptive. Due to his family's history of being either merchants dealing with Theshidir's side of business, or shinobi excelling at infiltration, he grew up in a household where lying was not only allowed, it was encouraged. Sori didn't quite understand how it worked, since every question or answer could be a lie but she supposed it was natural for Hisoka and his skill with lying got them out of more than one compromising situation. Sori had to admit, being on a team of liars and mind readers was trying at best, but she understood that this was what they were born to do. This was their job, their life really. Besides, it wasn't like she was much better. So honestly, Sori didn't hate her team for their attitude outside of missions. In fact, sometimes she even enjoyed their banter and lie competitions. That didn't mean it wasn't annoying however. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Chan. Did I hurt your feelings? This was one of those times. What do you mean, this is one of those times? Are you on your period or something? Gur. No, Inori, now get your stupid mind-reading voodoo stuff out of my head before I shove my kanai so far up your ass you'll taste it. Sori growled in anger as she swatted her annoyingly cheeky teammate away. Coming back from a mission was always trying, as the boys finally got to drop their professional behavior and return to their casual ones. And since they were deprived of it for so long, both Inori and Hisoka seemed to want to make the best of it. Personally, Sori thought they were enjoying their freedom a bit too much. Wow, such violence towards me Sori-chan. Inori pouted in response to her outburst. Personally, Hisoka's bored drawl interrupted Sori's attempted comeback. I think you're overreacting. 
Saying that Mikaru-sensei is prettier than Sori isn't that much of an insult, since he still implied that you're pretty. Turning his dark green eyes her way, he continued, Don't girls like being called pretty? Sori huffed. Yes, but not in comparison to other girls. Boys. They don't understand a woman at all. Inori grinned. Well then, I apologize with my wording. Turning his gaze to their sensei, who was sitting lazily in the tree next to the training grounds, he called out, Mikara-sensei, I think you're really pretty. Mikara-sensei's silvery voice drew Sori's eyes from glaring at Inori to aforementioned woman. Why thank you, Inori-kun, she laughed, but you're a bit young for my tastes. Try that compliment with some of the older genin, and you'll get a girlfriend for sure. This time, Sori got to laugh as Inori's cheeks burned red. T that's not what I meant. Glaring at the chuckling boy next to him, he yelled, Hisoka, help me out here. Fine Hisoka huffed. Almost as though a light bulb went off, a mischievous smirk overtook his exasperated face. Sori-chan, you're still gonna beat him up, right? He's annoying. Hisoka. Not gracing the boy with a response, Sori swung a large uppercut at the loud-mouthed blonde, sending him flying into the air and into a tree. What was that for, you ugly old hag? Inori screamed. A tick twitched on Sori's brow as she turned away from his direction in a huff. Her eyes locking on the black-haired bow in front of her, she made up her mind. Kabang! A disgruntled Hisoka joined Inori in the tree, the latter of which was looking very put out. I'm out of here. Sori growled as she stomped away from the clearing. Mikara-sensei, I'll be at training tomorrow. A sigh drew from the tree their sensei was currently residing in. I swear, I don't know whether to be concerned or amused. Glancing a silver eye at the two boys, both of whom looked like they were still breathing, Mikara shrugged. They'll live. She jumped down from her perch and strode over to the two boys. You two are such idiots. Ugh. Stupid boys, Sori muttered. The brown-haired Kunoichi grumbled as she stomped away from the training grounds, blades of grass being mercilessly crushed underfoot. Sori was not a happy Kunoichi. Seriously, this has got to be the third time this month that I've left practice early because of them. They just don't know when to quit, do they? Those thick-headed little bastards she grumbled, completely unaware of the fact that she was talking out loud. I mean really, couldn't they have some sort of decency? I'm a fucking teenage girl, I have enough insecurities already without being told that my 34-year-old sensei is prettier than I am. Those little. Those little what? Eep. Jumping in surprise, Sori turned behind her in a fright, her hand already at her kanai pouch. What she saw before her was a rather startled, confused little boy. As sorry, I didn't mean to scare you, he murmured, looking rather ashamed of himself. Letting a smile slip onto her face, Sori knelt down. It's all right, kiddo, I was just startled, that's all. Cammy above, why couldn't all boys these days be this polite and cute? What you doing out here by yourself? Are you lost? The boy scratched his head. Kinda. Sori looked closer at the boy. With his sunshine blonde hair and cheery blue eyes that seemed to sparkle in happiness, the kunoichi was seriously reminded of a charming, happier, nicer Inori. Yes, she could definitely see the resemblance. Maybe he was a Yamanaka? They were the only prominent blondes in the village at the moment. Well, how about I walk you home? She asked politely. He smiled. Thank you, miss, but I really gotta find something first. His cheeks turned a pale red in slight embarrassment. I was playing with my cousin she's a ninja like you, you know, and she took me home for lunch and I realized that I forgot my ball back at the place with the tall trees and now she's out on a mission and I don't know what to do. He said it all in one breath. Sori was stunned and rather impressed. I can help you find your ball if you want, um she trailed off, realizing she never asked his name. The boy quickly caught on and supplied a cheerful, I'm Ruto. Thanks for the help miss. Chuckling and internally squealing at his cuteness, she replied, no problem Ruto, and call me Sori. Okay Sori San, he chirped. Taking his tiny hand in hers, Sori asked, so do you remember where the ball was? Ruto shook his head. No, but I do know it was in this clearing, with this big boulder shaped like a turtle. The description clicked in Sori's head. Ah, you must mean training ground nine. My team sometimes goes there to practice. Yeah, that must be it. My mommy made me a snack, but I got really hungry so I went home to have lunch a oh no. My mummy's gonna kill me when she finds out that I went off by himself. His eyes were comically wide and his lower lip trembled. Sori was about to wrap the poor boy in a hug he looked genuinely terrified when a ball of blue fabric collided with her stomach and two tiny hands gripped her waist in a death hold. Please, Sori-san, you gotta find my ball without me. I need to tell my mama where I am so she doesn't worry. I'll be right back, I promise. The little ball of energy was gone before Sori could even utter a response. Shrugging, Sori headed towards her new destination, training ground nine.
She just hoped she would find this ball before some random genin discovered it and decided it was a good kunai target. If she had stayed just a little longer, she would have noticed the young blonde hiding behind a tree a dozen or so feet away, his cheery innocent grin replaced with a more devious smirk. Hook, line and sunker. Another voice piped in, it's sinker not sunker you baka. Sure, not here Sikchan. Shut up, Rudochan. Five minutes later. Stepping into the tree-filled clearing, Sori examined her surroundings carefully, looking for some kind of round object. Her heart sank as she suspected the ball was long gone. Looking towards the strangely turtle-shaped boulder, she decided looking behind it wasn't a bad idea before breaking the news to the little boy, whom still hadn't returned. I hope he's okay. Lost in her thoughts, Sori didn't notice the, rather obvious, ninja wire splayed across the training grounds. Screechreach. Her foot catching on the wire, Sori fell hard onto the ground, the wire digging into the skin around her ankle painfully. Ninja wire? But... She realized it too late. Trap. The sudden realization caused Sori to look up, only to see a bucket full of something. Was it bombs? Poison? Kanai? Acid, tumbling towards her. Reacting as any teenage girl probably would, she let out a shrill scream and shielded her face. A tumble of wire and a bucket later, a shock Sori stood drenched to the bone on the ground. W water? Noit smells weird almost like spoiled milk. But that made no sense. Unless. It was a prank? Sori felt rage well up inside her. How dare that little boy take advantage of her emotional state and her kindness. If she ever saw that Ruto again. Thundering footsteps alerted her to the three people approaching the grounds. Further examination revealed them to be her teammates themselves. Inori, always the one to jump to conclusions, arrived first, kneeling down and examining her with an intensity that was almost unnerving. Sori, are you alright? Are you injured? He asked urgently, lifting one of her arms to inspect. Sori, say something. Are you alright? There was Hisoka, right behind Inori as always. Surprisingly enough, Sori detected honest panic and sincerity in his tone being a constant receiver of his lies, she could tell the difference. Boys, give her some space. She's obviously overwhelmed. Mikara-sensei ordered sternly. Her silver eyes, however, betrayed her concern. Why are you soaking wet? She asked confusedly. I am alright. Sori managed to summon her voice. It was I don't know. Some kind of prank, I think. Two pairs of hands helped her up, and she shot them grateful smiles. If there was one thing to thank those kids for it was her forgiving her teammates. Every girl loves to be doted on and cared for, after all. But still. She smelled. She was soaked and humiliated. She smelled. She was embarrassed and covered in spoiled milk. That brat would pay. Damn you, are you Tio? Kakashi was having a strange day. Aika Aika summer was amazing, of course, since Jiraiya never failed to disappoint. Kakashi almost drooled at the amazing chapter where the main character, Himanoshi, had five super sexy, amazing girls as his new slaves, and oh, the things he did with them. Cough anyways. Kakashi, holding the bold, yellow book in his hand, whistled a merry tune as he jogged down the streets, a perversive grin stretched behind his mask. Oh yeah? Sensei I thigh. Oh no. Coaxing an eye smile onto his face, he turned to face his cute little demon's protégés. Why hello Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke. Narrowing his eye suddenly, he noticed the strangely sheepish looks on their faces. Okay, what did you do? Nothing, sensei. Sakura chirped innocently. Why do you ask? Because, Kakashi said dryly, you look like you robbed someone. Naruto let out a nervous giggle. Please, sensei. We haven't robbed anyone yet. He grinned mischievously. And who is your victim, exactly? Ano one. Kakashi raised a single eyebrow. Do I look like I was born yesterday? Yup. Naruto and Sakura grinned cheekily and in unison. Kakashi scowled. That was a rhetorical question. But we answered anyways. Sakura grinned. The silver-haired man studied the girl carefully. You know, you're way too smart to be just a six-year-old. She stuck her tongue out. We were out on the streets and there was a public library near one of our old bases. The boys, being the barbarians that they are, hey, focus more on fighting, while I wanted to be intelligent enough to survive. We kind of balanced each other out. And half the time, I don't even know the words she's saying. Naruto added. Wait, bases? Kakashi was very confused. So they had multiple bases but why move? Why not go to an orphanage? There were still so many mysteries surrounding the trio, Kakashi had to answer them. Yeah, bases? Wanna go home and you can tell me more about what it was like on the streets. The immediately sobered. You really wanna know? Of course. 
he sent them a gentle smile which, he had to note, he couldn't even muster for most of the Kanoha population, and, patting their backs gently, began ushering them in the direction of his apartment. Both sported small grins, grins that for some reason seemed more genuine than the cheery ones they always showed the world. Then let's go wait, where's Sasuke? Eh, he's come around eventually. He knows Kanoha pretty well though not as well as me. Kakashi shrugged, before grabbing the children and shoe shining away. Hidden behind a pole a few blocks down, Sasuke giggled. In his hands he clutched a small, dark brown wallet to be more specific, Kakashi's wallet. He didn't even notice. Turning down the road, he grinned. Super awesome earpieces, here we come. Settling down on the couch in his their living room, Sakura began the tale. So, basically, Naruto here got kicked out of the Kanoha orphanage. He was loud-mouthed, annoying, and refused to give in or listen to anyone. Needless to say, this rubbed some of the orphanage employees the wrong way. And when I say some, I mean all of them. Sakura deadpanned. Naruto pouted. When the three of us first got together, Sasuke suggested going to the orphanage together, since at least that way we'd be fed and wouldn't be alone. But since Naruto got himself kicked out, he couldn't show his face there without probably getting beat up. And we weren't just going to abandon him, so we decided to live on the streets together. We just salvaged things, borrowed things, stole, Naruto corrected, and basically spent a good four or so months making our first little base. We weren't experts on the streets at first, of course. As a matter of fact most of the time we got caught and chased away one time a ninja scolded us and he was scary. But yeah, eventually we learned from our mistakes and we are now the experts on street smarts. Kakashi had to admit, he was intrigued. So yeah, our first base. It was in this abandoned shed, and we added traps and living space and stuff. But eventually, people found us. I'm guessing either thugs, thieves, or just really mean civilians. Anyways, they tore it down and chased us away. We all suffered some injuries, ranging from a couple artificial scrapes to a broken wrist. That was when we decided that in order to survive, we needed to defend ourselves. So Naruto, since he was the best at stealing, got us a book on shinobi arts. It was an academy textbook, I think. Poor little Jenin. But we learned, and we even managed to find some discarded ninja tools that is, once we knew what they were and were able to recognize them. Sasuke was always the best at weaponry, while Naruto was just better at hand-to-hand. -hand. So we kept moving, since obviously we couldn't stay hidden forever, eventually made our seventh base over at the alleyway. I went scavenging, but tried to wander farther this time and got lost, and so I looked for a nice-looking ninja, and you happened to be there. And you know what happened next. Sakura finished. That's impressive, Kakashi admitted. You're obviously proficient at your fields. Some questions I've been meaning to ask you though would you mind me interrogating you all a bit? The two surrogate siblings glanced at each other before shrugging. Sure. I don't see why not. Great. Now, being a ninja, Kakashi loved finding out information about people, be them ally or enemy. Did that sound stalkerish? Yes. Was it the truth? Yup. Sakura, how do you know about Tsunade-sama's style of fighting? Sakura looked genuinely confused. What about Tsunade's style of fighting? Kakashi stared. Don't you know about the famous ninja of our village? You read a book, he said helplessly. Well, Sakura huffed. The book only had their names and stuff, nothing about their abilities. Besides, I'm a six-year-old. She scowled at the kapinin, something which Kakashi noted made her look extremely cute, like a riled-up kitten. Then how did you manage to copy it? I didn't copy it, she said indignantly. I just channeled chakra to my fists and pounded stuff. It was like encasing your hand in iron, and makes a six-year-old's taijutsu much scarier. She crossed her arms and puffed out her cheeks. Well, Kakashi snickered, I will be showing you her fighting style once you get into the academy. It's important for every ninja to be proficient in taijutsu, after all. But what about me? Naruto whined, apparently fed up with being ignored. Kakashi patted his head. Since you're the more unorthodox one, you'll get to create your own style. Awesome. Naruto screeched, the older man and young girl wincing in unison. Take it easy on my eardrums, kid Kakashi muttered. So. He immediately switched topics. Naruto, you have a ridiculous amount of chakra. Do you have any idea why? The blonde, for once, hesitated. No. He said finally. Shaking his head internally, Kakashi shrugged. If he didn't want to say, that was his decision. Well, your main focus will be chakra control, since you'll be a total juggernaut if you can learn to harness the chakra you have inside you. Naruto grinned at the sound of juggernaut cool. Then, after a few seconds wait what's a juggernaut? Sakura giggled before replying. It means that you'll be strong and stuff. All right. Naruto's gonna be a juggernaut jjuggernurially powerful, databeo. The silver-haired man felt a peculiar ringing in his ears as he shook the stars out of his vision. 
Clapping his hands together, he smiled and said, Well, I need to go read my pigo and finish up some top secret shinobi business. You kids continue whatever you were doing. Oh, we will sensei. Naruto looked evil. And that honestly scared Kakashi more than Anko with a whip and two rolls of duct tape. His unrivaled instinct kicking in, the copycat Nin rushed through hand seals and disappeared in a flash, the kids staring at the spot he was at a moment before with wide smirks. He he he, they cackled. That will be seven hundred Rio, please, the cashier man said in a bored tone. Reaching for his wallet, Kakashi prepared to pay. H.S. hand grasped nothing but air. His other pocket? Nothing. His shinobi pouch? Nope. He panicked. Then, Kakashi remembered. Being the analytical person he was, he immediately deducted what had happened. Damn you, Sasuke. Three hours, twenty-two pranks and one merry chase later. That was amazing. Naruto grinned as he plopped down onto their bed, smirking from ear to ear. Indeed. Sasuke too lied down on the bed, scooting over so the pinkette could join them. That was really fun, Sakura admitted, but I was seriously scared that those civilians were going to hang us from their clothes line like that guy from our fourth base. Nodding in agreement, Naruto looked over their loot. During the perfect distractions red chaos that their pranks caused, their little team had taken to pillaging candy, stuffed toys, and random handfuls of pocket change from unsuspecting civilians. They also miraculously managed to find items that had mysteriously gone missing only a few minutes before they showed up. Most ninja, however, they avoided, since even a fresh genin could stand up to a bunch of barely trained six-year-olds. Their collection was quite impressive, however. Five lollipops, three jawbreakers, seven chocolate bars, four melted chocolate bars, four stuffed teddy bears, surprisingly, two baseballs, two hundred real, and their grand prize. A fuzzy, dog-sized stuffed giraffe. Naruto had no idea how that random adult managed to find one, but once they returned her lost house keys, she was more than willing to give it to the sweet, innocent group of toddlers that helped her out of a bad situation. The blonde smirk grew, if that was possible. Innocent indeed. Kara, go put the bag on the dresser, Sasuke muttered, turning so his back was against the wall and closed his eyes. I don't w na. Fine, the pinkette pouted before in a very annoyed manner slouching out of the bed and grabbed the bag, careful not to spill its contents. Plopping it down onto the bed, she yawned. Despite her high intelligence, she was still a young girl, and all small children need naps. Nappy time. She closed her eyes and slept. Get up. The trio were rudely awakened by a strangely serious and stern Kakashi. We have a problem. Go get dressed now. He ordered, his face set into a scowl that, despite most of the village being familiar to, was totally foreign to the three children. Sensing the urgency and annoyance in his voice, the three kids hastily complied and before five minutes were up they had breakfast to go shoved in their faces. Eat up quickly. We need to leave as soon as possible. W what's wrong? Sakura asked nervously, her stutter returning due to her anxiety. The Hokage needs to see us. And from what I heard, he's not happy. What if Naruto has Sanin level jutsu in Shunin exams? And thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoyed this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part. Comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.